All right, a very good morning, everyone who is live on this great platform. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome you to the final lecture, season three, Navigating Life After Campus Virtual Class. I'm free honored uh, to stand or sit before you or before such a diverse and accomplished audience, all eager to embark on this insightful journey. My name is Adrian Kakinda. I'm glad that you are live and kicking. Hopefully, uh, it's a new month. It's a new, new month. And we are moving towards that uh, great part of the year. It's in such a great, great period. This season has been a remarkable journey filled with invaluable lessons and shared experiences. But I want to let you know that today we culminate the series with a great session that promises to leave a lot. It has through the transitional phase after campus life, offering their expertise and wisdom. So the theme today is something very, very amazing. Um, we have said that those things that weren't part of your course Your team defeat to join this great platform. It's for everyone across the country, for the international audience that has uh, joined in. Thanks very much for coming through. Happy New Month. Today's lecture. Yeah, please let me know. Uh, someone to share with me, um, uh, you just give me a thumbs up whether I'm loud and clear before I continue. Uh, anyone to say to me that are loud and clear, we are getting you. Okay, thank you very much. I've picked that. I'm loud and clear. All right, so... Um, Let's uh, start uh, from this angle. Uh, okay. okay, 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 okay. So I'm trying to share my screen. Very many people joining, thanks very much. Uh, actually, there is a live feed uh, for those uh, who are around Jambogo. This feed is live in NPT conference hall. There are some people who are sitting in there watching us live. Uh, it's thanks very much to Jambogo University. Department of Psychology and the Department of Guidance and Counseling Unit. I'm also happy to mention that we have the acting senior university counselor on this call. Uh, that is uh, counseling psychologist Winfred Chosaba is live. Uh, our uh, We have already our speakers, two of them are right here. Dr. Hilda Bahat Sabit is already on and can be Mrs. Alice Damolila is also on uh, this great morning. So it's the last lecture, season three, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I'm your host. I've already uh, talk, uh, said out my name. Uh, my name is Adrian Kakinda. I always ho uh, host this lecture in November. Why November? It's because it's my birth month. Uh, this is one way of uh, giving back to society. But of, but of course, you know, I love young people. And I've ever been in these deep waters of finishing campus and asked myself, okay, 
campus is done, what next? So I know it's uh, it, it has been really a great, great, great journey. So this is the third season. One, 2020, 2022 was 2021. We missed a season in between. I don't remember very well, but Councillor will remind me. So currently I serve at Chambogu University as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Psychology since 2017. I love behavior change. I love counseling. I love mental health. So that's where I am. And I'm the CEO of Adrian Careers Consult. Currently I'm uh, undertaking my doctoral studies here in the United Kingdom, in particular Scotland, University of Dundee. All right, but today our program lineup, uh, very first we shall have some introductions, uh, a prayer from any volunteer, and then we shall have remarks from the uh, head of department if he's, if he's on. If he's not on, we shall have the university councillor, and then we shall have our first speaker. Uh, we shall have our first speaker at exactly 12 minutes past 9 a.m. East African Standard Time, and then we shall have 40 minutes of her. Then we shall have a Q&A. Then we have our second speaker. And we have a Q&A. Then we shall have our third speaker. And we have a Q&A. And then we shall have closing remarks. So our target is to close this call on uh, at 12 p.m. East African Standard Time. So that's our program lineup. Inform a colleague uh, that, you know, these guys have really started. Uh, then after that, um, what we shall do... Um, right here um that's going to be our to our 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 you know our code today if you can't fly then run if you can't run then walk if you can't walk then crawl but whatever you do you have to keep moving regardless we all know things may not be right that side but tap on your sofa and say you know what i have to keep moving so that's what's going to keep us moving today and we all know that this is talking about people from higher institutions of learning. I last checked yesterday and Uganda has 282 registered institutions of higher learning and 4,924 accredited programs. So you can see how big uh, what we are trying to do is indeed very, very amazing, and helpful to the people. All right, our presenters today, Welcome with me, the last lecture, season three, we shall have Dr. Bahati Hilda Sabiti, a relationship coach. Now, this is just a, um, a, a summary, what I could do, but she's too big. Yeah, she's too big. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm talking about? A relationship coach, a counselor, happiness expert, public speaker, and an interactive. And yes. <laughs> For the theme, she'll tackle focus on the girl child and the general career transitional tips. I know girls are here and you are all asking yourself, okay, what's going to happen after campus? Very many pressures are wrong, that line, but trust me, she's going to do us a service. 40 minutes of Dr. Hilda Bahati, she'll be coming through. Uh, actually, she's our first presenter this great morning. Then we shall have Kanoni Alice Damulida, the director of St. Mark's College in Namaguma. Namaguma could, should be on Masaka Road going to Masaka. So over 20 years of HR experience, she's an entrepreneur, she's a business mentor, she's a Rotarian, she's a parent, she's perhaps everything you could look at and say, wow, what a great life lived. So the theme today, being an employer, she's, she has employed very many young people, she's still employing very many, she will give us the employer's mind today the employer's mind today. So if you're preparing your CV, preparing your application, preparing for an interview, she will do you a service this great morning. And she'll be our second speaker. Then lastly, we shall have comrade Omuntu Wawansi, uh, Andrew Chamagelo. She is a distinguished news anchor. Please, uh, you can mute your microphone. And then she he works at NTV Uganda, you know. Um, he's an executive director um uh of Omuntu Wawansi organization, a team leader, Manke Yugi, and mental health in Sudha East. So Dr. Hilda will be tackling the uh something in regard to ladies or girls. Andrew Chamagelo is very passionate when it comes to men, men today. That's why she has Manke Yugi. So focus on the boy child today and life after campus. And of course he will throw some nuggets around those ends. 
So ladies and gentlemen, that's how far we are going to go today. You are welcome. It's a buffet. It's a very exciting uh, mo morning. And I would like to let you know that I'm very, very happy to have you on this call. And for those people who are live or um, at uh, NPT Conference Hall in Chambok University, thanks very much uh, for being there. Uh, those in the waiting room, I'm sorry, I'm doing uh, very, I, I'm at a meeting and I'm doing this. All right, it's very amazing and very interesting. Okay, uh, now I want to invite Councillor Winfred. I've realized the head of the department is not yet on. So Councillor Winfred, please help us and give us two minutes. Remarks, welcome remarks. Uh, welcome us all. You've been uh, a foot soldier putting this up and down. Before our first speaker, please, Councillor Winfred, if you are getting me live, please, the floor is yours. You are welcome and good morning. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning, everybody who has joined. Thank you for joining this call. I'm Winfred Kiosava Birirunwa. I'm a senior counseling psychologist in Chambogo University. I head the guidance and counseling uh, unit. And the unit is under Students Affairs and Welfare Department. I am a member, board member, Uganda Counseling Association in charge of trainings. So when we have meetings like this, I feel excited. I would like to welcome you on my own behalf and on behalf of the head of department, uh, psychology, Dr. Chibedi is still in a jam a bit. Please forgive him. And this, um, in the NPT conference hall, we are still trying to make sure we put a screen, but I am here with some people, a few using my laptop. Adrian, thank you very much. I am proud of you. As we come to this navigating through campus, I am so proud that I have you as my student. I have Bahati as my student, implying you have navigated through and you are doing it. Congratulations. And for that matter, on behalf of the psychology department, I would like to say that when we are done with campus, sometimes we get challenges. And that is why we have the counselor on board. And that is why we have uh, the HR on board and Andrew on board. I would like to thank you guys. It's not an easy moment at this time, but you have sacrificed your time, your knowledge and everything to come and say something to our dear students and possibly to some of us who are also still students somewhere, somehow. We know very well, for example, in the guidance and counseling unit, many times students come and they are worried. I am getting done. I am going to do the last paper, but what is going to happen out there? And the reason why we are very happy that we have this kind of lecture, and I thank Adrian for being so initiative Putting this together hasn't been very easy. So members, let us listen to everybody who is talking to us. Let us note down our points. We may need to ask questions so that we can move together and we deal with our psychological imbalances. Thank you. Welcome to this. All right. Thank you very much. Mama Winfred Chiosaba, uh, very, very amazing there in Chambogo, doing great work. Actually, what I didn't mention, actually, uh, Dr. Bahati is an alumni of Chambogo University. Uh, I know she'll give uh, a brief about herself. I may not finish. I may even do a mistake. And I'm very, very skeptical in that regard. All right. It's 15 past 9 a.m. East African Standard Time. And for those, uh, our international audience, um, 15 past 6 a.m. GMT. Thanks very much for coming through. Uh, okay, now we have 50, 50, 50, 52 people on call. Uh, actually, we are streaming live on my YouTube channel too. I'm seeing very many people following from that end. It's uh, We are streaming in real time right now. For those who have issues with Zoom, you can pick uh, this great conversation via our YouTube channel. And for those who are having a live viewing uh, at NPT Conference Hall, Chambogo University. So without wasting any further time, uh, I want to welcome Dr. Bahati Hilda at this great moment to take us through about um, 
transitioning uh life after campus and then she uh, in, in within he she will try to really focus more on the girl child and i know very many girls ladies are on this call please you're welcome doctor thanks for coming through all right uh thank you so much i hope i'm also loud and clear uh Very loud and clear. all right thank you so much um adrian thank you so much wow it, this is amazing i've um i think this is not the first time the very first one that you put up i think it was live in chambogo i think i was part of it and i loved being part of it because then i got to hold so many people's hands during their transition to um like real life out there and uh, it has really 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 been amazing what uh, people can do if you try to hold their hands if they can ask questions and if they can learn as much as as they can okay so um i, I want us to um also give thanks to um uh, let me say Madame Winfred. I still call her Madame Winfred from the time I was uh, in Chambogo. That's quite some time ago. But you played a very pivotal role in my life. Your humility, your being able to walk with the students and being able to hold their hands and being able to encourage them. That is amazing. Not so many uh, lecturers, not so many heads of departments can be able to do that for the students. But for what you are doing, uh, I mean, it's really, really amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Adrian. Thank you so much for putting this together all the speakers that are going to speak, thank you so much. But again, I thank everyone that has been able to attend today and is coming here with a pen and a notebook to be able to jot down or even commit to memory everything that we are going to share. So my heart goes out to our female child or ladies, but I mean, this helps all of us because we are all transitioning and the hurdles that we are going to find are going to be the same. The things that we are going to encounter are going to be the same. When I think back to the time that I was actually living campus myself, uh, it was a moment of... Um, for me, it was a moment of I was unaware what I was going to meet. But one thing I believe and I think I should be able to start there this morning is um, I was at a place where I believed in myself so much that I did not think there was anything like failure in me. And I think that helped me so much because my counterparts, the ones that had feeble belief and now, when it comes to my story, I came back to campus and I think most of you are even going to hear this for the very first time, um, Adrian and Madame Winfred. I came back to campus as uh, the last uh, the last resort for me because I had dropped out of school and I didn't have money to go back to school. And I came back, coming to back to school with 20 year olds and 20 20, 19 year olds and 21 year olds and guess what I think I was in my 29 coming to 30 and just life was not adding up because I had dropped out of school I did not have you know tuition I had gone for you know for business and I just decided and then I made a turnaround and said if I don't make it in life there is no chance for my siblings to make it in life so I must make it um okay uh, Okay, someone's microphone is, is open. I must make it. Against all odds, I really, really, really have to make it. Okay. I am sorry. This morning, I came through a, a washing bay. I have a very tight schedule today. So I thought we would have this moment while I have uh, my car washed as well. Okay. So now I come back to campus and I am quite old, older than everyone else that is at campus. I am actually paying my own tuition and I don't have the luxury to actually fail. And now you are graduating, but you're thinking, OK, what's going to happen now? I did not have the luxury to have that question, just like everyone else. While everyone else was asking what's going to become of me, what's going to happen? In my mind, I was ready to do anything that fell on my lap, so anything that I was willing to look out for. And I remember in the last days of campus, 
there was this one time I actually didn't even have anything to eat. And I remember walking towards uh, Banda supermarket, uh, not supermarket, Banda market, this general market where they sell Nya uh, Nya, Tungulu and all that. So I go to the market and I tell this lady, I remember I had 200 shillings. And I tell this lady because I have, had paid my tuition. I, I didn't have anything on me. I only had money to rent a car, one room and, you know, just to even help my family back home because I'm the firstborn. My mother does not work my father is not that much of a present father so i decided to go to banda market and this lady looked at me i think she had pity on me and she gave me um she gave me carrots i think it was like a bucket full of carrots now i walk back home and then or to my car room in chireka and i can't eat that the carrots. I was so hungry. I only had 200. They have given me so many carrots. But again, I sat on my bed and cried tears. And I was just, just asking myself, you know what? I think I need to get out of this situation. If I don't get out now, I don't think I am going to make it in life. And I remember crying. And in that crying, I remember making a covenant with my God. I made a covenant in my heart and told God that, you know what? Never in my life, because even when I was going through a set of brokenness, bro bro I will tell you for the ladies that are here, I was also going through a, a moment of heartbreak. OK, I don't fear talking about my life because these are the things that have happened and they are the things that have made me who I am and the kind of commitment that I have to my personal growth and the growth of those that are surrounding me. So I was going through a moment of heartbreak and then I was also going through a lot of bro uh, brokenness, you know, being broke like you don't have anything. So I made a covenant with God and I said, God, never in my life will I ever be broke and broken in my life ever again. And I'm just going to go to town. I'm going to look for something to do. I am going to do everything that I can to make sure that I get out of this situation. And indeed, true to my word, because this was around the time we were actually doing our final exams. And so true to my, I, I, I mean, I was reading, yes, I knew I would pass, but again, I knew I had to start working. So I walked to, to town. I didn't take a taxi. I walked from Banda. I went to town and I remember meeting my, by then my husband was my, was my friend. So he's the only one I knew in town. So I went to town, I met him and he had his, his boss. And so we met over lunch and then um, uh, he asked me, what, what, what can you do? What do you want to do like with your life? And I said, you know what? I am, a, I'm a counselor by training and all I want to do is to be able to start up a, a private farm. And he told me, I have never heard of a private farm. I said, I want to start a private farm. Yes. I have never seen anyone do it in Uganda, but I want to be able to have an office where people can come for counseling, where I can be able to sit with them, go through the issues that they're going through. And I remember, okay, so he told me, what's the name? What do you want? What name do you want to give it? So I, I thought and I scratched my head. I couldn't find a name. And I was like, okay, now that is your assignment. Find a name because a private firm has to have a name. And then he, told, he went ahead to tell me that, um, you know what? Uh, I've given you two minutes on radio, six minutes a day. That is two minutes every hour, every every four hours. So those were six minutes. I don't know what you can do with those six minutes, but you can have the six minutes on radio. So I get on radio. I get on radio and I start uh, my counseling sessions on radio. I start telling people about life. I start, you know, and I used two minutes. Like if you saw the energy I put into two minutes, because part of what I want us to share today is a visionless life. A person that does not have a vision is prone to injury. Number one is prone to injury. That means you cannot see, you do not have a dream. You do not have a vision. You do not believe in yourself. You do not believe you can make it. You are going to make accidents because then you're going to fall in any place any ditch you're going to take up anything do any you don't know what you want in life and most of the times i think ladies we really fall prey to this where we don't know what we want uh sorry about that where we don't know what we want and then we tend to settle just for anything that uh, we are doing or what anyone else is giving to us. And I say, no, that's not going to be my life. I have a vision. I know what I want. I am training to be a counselor. I signed up for this course. I really wanted it. And now I have it. 
I'm going to maximize it. I gave it my whole on that radio. Now, when I was on radio, that is Spirit FM, that is where NTV actually sees, uh, gets to know about me. That is where Farida Nakaziwe gets to know about me. That is how I'm invited on TV. And when I started the journey of TV, I have never looked back since 2013. I have never looked back. I have been on TV. I have been on radio since 2014. But how the door opened is when I was faithful with a small, because so many of us are getting out there in the real life as ladies, and we are thinking, oh, I want a man that is going to sweep me over my feet, and I want a man who is going to take me to Muyenga, a man who is going to take me to Kololo. We think things are going to come on a silver platter because you are a girl. It's the same world that we are facing out there. They are the same hurdles that we are facing out there with our male counterparts. So you might as well brace yourself and buckle up because the ride is about to get tough and the ride is about to get crazy. Okay. So I need you to be able to be attuned and know, do you have a vision for your life? And having a vision for your life is like you having an eyesight that when you have eyesight, when you can see, you are not going to bump into things. OK, you're not going to just fall anyhow. So when you have a vision for your life, that means even when you're given something small, you are going to be very faithful. Where I am right now, I mean, um, I'm with a media house. My husband or uh, and I or, uh, run this media house, Spirit TV, Spirit FM, Bob FM. We have radio stations in, 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 uh, in Ghana. We have radio stations in Sudan. We have radio stations in the United States. So you, you clearly see that whatever I went through in practicing, that what, whenever I was very faithful with the little, God actually gave us more. To the point that right now, I don't take chances. I do the recruiting myself. Everyone that we have on the radio station, on the TV station, I do the recruiting myself. And let me tell you, I have seen young people waste themselves and I'll, I'll even give this example. Um, I think three months back or four months back, I decided and said that, you know what, I can get the same amount of work with half the people that are working or with um, three thirds of the people that are working. And guess what? I went on to actually do a reshuffle and laid off some people. And that was a financial decision. That was a business decision because people are taking care of, of, of their businesses. I am taking care of our business. So that means I am going to think, how do we thrive? How do we flourish? That means people are going to make decisions for you. And guess what? I think most of the people that I actually laid off, and uh, this comes in in, um, in a very sorry state because most of them were actually ladies. Why? Because they were not meeting the standards. Because most of them would want to come around and be sluggish. They would want to dance around. They would want to take a whole day. You have given them the targets. They have not met the targets, but they still want to smile with you and they still want to look cute. If you, you cannot, beauty in this market does not sell. It's performance. It's how much you commit. It's how much you get determined. It's how much value you can bring to the to, to the ta to the table. So as an employer, I'm concerned about the value that you give me. So if you don't have a vision, you cannot buy into my vision. Because the first step I do while I am recruiting is to be able to indoctrinate you with um with how our company or the DNA of our of, of our company. So that means if you're a visionless person who is just making accidents everywhere, and you know people who make accidents, you go to one company, you're fired. You go to the next one, you're laid off. You go to the to the other one, they, they even ghost you. Like they no longer with you or without you, the company can flourish. Can you be an important person? If you ever choose to look for a job, if you ever choose to create your own job. Do you know that, that some people even become sluggish at their own jobs? Like they have started, maybe, let me just give an example, maybe of a, of a counselor. And you're saying that, okay, um, I have an office. And then you start coming late to office. You start not opening uh, some days. You open up uh, whichever time you want. So you realize that you're not giving people the value that they really want from you. So I need you to be able to look into the value, but where that does the value come from? You having a life with a vision. 
the moment you have a life with a vision, even when you get into another person's vision, you realize that you will perform to your to the best of your knowledge to make sure that you give them everything that they are supposed to to get okay so um that is uh one of the things that i wanted us to talk about a life with a vision i want you to ask yourself do you have a vision because what a vision does it helps you not to chase after things that you are less concerned it helps you stay in your own lane it helps you make better decisions it helps you to clarify some of us don't even think about the decisions that we are making why am I making this decision? Can you go to the grassroots? Is this decision in five years uh, to come, is it going to be beneficial? Is it going to still help me? Is it going to be um, is it going to be helpful? So I need you to be able to ask yourself the crucial questions, answer them, and make sure that you're actually headed for the right direction and the things that you want to be able to fulfill in your own life okay so i hope we are learning if you're learning i want you to put in the chat i want you to indicate what are you picking out what stands out for you what can you relate with and if you have any questions please i'll also make sure that you actually put them um in in the chat box so that i can be able to uh, respond to them as we go along if you're the kind that is not seeing just imagine you're blind i want you to imagine you're blind that means you cannot move, okay? That means your acceleration or your movement is inhibited. Because I chose to term or to theme our talk today as dangers of living a visionless life. If you don't have a vision in your life, you are blind. If you're blind, you are prone to accidents. That's number one. Number two, your acceleration is inhibited. You cannot move as fast as you wanted to move. So many of us, you want to hit the ground while running. You want to be able to finish campus, get a job, run at a very terrific speed, grow, have good finances, have a better family, and then go on to do nice things. And then some of us, we hit the ground while sleeping or we hit the ground while blind. So that means we cannot move as fast. That is how I meet people, and I told you I came back to campus going to school with 19-year-olds and 20-year-olds, and guess what? I have met some of those people, and they are not doing any good in their lives. Me who started, like, <laughs> I think it was more of adult education for me, I hit the ground running. I did not allow anything to inhibit my acceleration. I knew what I wanted. And by the way, knowing what you want and it working out the way you planned are two different things. So most of the times, I was actually a mature student. Thank you very much. Most of the times, what when we want something so bad and it does not turn out the way we want it to be, for example, you go to school, you're done with your campus life, and then all of a sudden, you're getting out there and you're not getting a job. So many people actually tend to give up, okay? So many people tend to throw in the towel. So many people decide to sleep. So many people decide to say, you know what? Uh, for me, I wanted a blue-collar job. I wanted a white-collar, sorry, a white-collar job. I will not do any blue-collar jobs. I'm not going to do any, any, any jobs that are not befitting. Do you know that is in this age and era that getting an office job versus people who are building their own brands, people who are media influencers, people who are out there to practice their passion and chase their purpose, they are actually making more money if they're very intentional because we are in a different generation. We are in an information plus technology generation. So that means if you have a skill, even if it's a skill to make baskets, even if it's a skill to run Excel, even if it's a skill to create courses, even if it's a skill, whatever skill, even if it's a language that you can teach people, do you know the whole world is willing to learn right now? Because information is selling like a hot cake. And some of us are going to say, me, I want to be an office. I just want to be a receptionist. I just want, because we have limited mindsets, because we do not have mm. a vision. If you have a vision, your, mi your mindset is open. Okay. So you're willing to see what is working and what is not working.
when I saw, because so many of the people that I went to school with said, ah, but you know, this counseling thing is not working and it's not helping. I don't, but who do you see thriving? And in my heart of hearts, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to this one thing because I feel it's my purpose. I feel it's my calling. I am going to pursue it and I'm going to do everything in my power to see it that I flourish. Right now, I will. I think I have more than 10 streams of income. 10 streams of income, okay? Just in being a coach, okay? In training, in public speaking, in writing books, in uh, in media, in media influencing, okay? So that means there is a lot more that is happening in my life and for good, okay? That is bringing in money and money that I had never even dreamt about. So I need you to be able to think. I need you to be able to open up your mind. I need you to be able to take your life seriously, okay? So... Number two, if we say that um, it inhibits your acceleration, okay? Number three, it creates codependence. A vision life, a visionless life creates codependence. That means you have to depend on someone. I want you to look at a blind person. A blind person needs someone else to help them move, needs someone else to see for them, needs someone else in order to cross the road. Need someone else to help them choose the clothes they're going to put on. Need someone else to help them to decide what kind of food they are going to eat or where they are going to go. So you realize that it becomes problematic. You are codependent. And let me tell you, when it comes to the female species, there is a way we love codependence. We love depending on people. We love not even depending, but over dependence. Okay? We want them to decide. And then you, de you depend on a boyfriend. You want them to decide what kind of hairstyle you make, what kind of phone you hold, what kind of apartment you stay in later on, what kind of car you stay, you, you drive. You want them to decide why, because now they have their money and now you are holding on for dear life and you want them to decide or to give you and to keep dishing and to keep sponsoring the kind of lifestyle that you are living. Everyone is under pressure right now. Everyone is under pressure. So the same man that you want to get things from also has pressures. They want to develop their lives. And let me tell you right now, you just don't ask, oh me, I want a wig of, of, of a million shillings. And you think they are still naive as they used to be. And they're just going to give you a million shillings for you to give, to put on your head. Okay? Decide what you want and go and get it yourself. Decide what you want and go get it for yourself. If God ever gives you someone that can actually help you or someone that can hold your hand, let it be an added advantage, okay? But you cannot get out of comfort, compass with still the same mindset, the same poor limited mindset and a visionless life where you are going to carry your burdens and place them on someone else. They are also trying to survive. They are also trying to make it. They're also trying to, 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 to decongest their own pressures in, the, the pressures in their own lives. They're also trying to buy land. They're also trying to get a better job. What are you doing? Can you do you? Can you try and open your eyes? Can you say, I was willing to start anywhere? The time that I left Chambogo, I was willing, even if it was to sweep, I was willing to sweep. That is how bad. So I want you to ask yourself, how bad do you want the success? How hungry are you for it? I was so hungry that if someone told me to sweep, I would sweep. If someone told me to be an office messenger, I would be an office messenger. I just needed somewhere to start, okay? And I was so serious about it. And so many of us are going to sit home and then we are going to task our parents, oh, that you know what? Um, please help me call your friends so that they can give me a job. And then they tell you to even take your CV. Some of you don't even have CV. You don't need to finish campus in order to have a C to, to create a CV. You can actually do short courses. You can actually increase on your competence. You can increase on your skills. You have so much time on your hand. Okay. Maybe you, you, you have evening lectures. Maybe you're even about to finish, but you have not even thought to look for something that can start sustaining you right now. 
I don't want you to depend on anyone. You, even our parents these days, it's so hard to depend on them because they have your siblings or maybe they have other things. Maybe they are even sick. Maybe they are not even fine. So I need you to start seeing, okay? Open your eyes. A visionless life is a life that is very, very, very painful. I don't want you to live it, not for anything and not for any um for any moment okay and then i want you to uh when it comes to being uh blind and living a visionless life as well it's a life of excuses okay a life of excuses every time you have an excuse every time uh i don't know if some of you are bible readers i'm just going to quote this very briefly uh, if some of you are bible readers if you uh remember the man at the pond of the cider who said, who told Jesus that every time I want to fall into the waters, remember the waters, the angel would come and stir up the water. And uh, that means uh, people would get healed. They would fall into the, the pond and they would get healed. And so uh, this man told Jesus that every time I want to fall in, others are going faster than me. Every time I want to fall in, there is no one to actually help me to get into the pond. Now, so many of us have so many excuses, so many excuses that every time, that, why don't you have a job? Uh, you know, because my uncle uh, is, is, is not good enough. You know, my uncle, Awalana family affair, and then you go into family conspiracies, and then you will go through... Um, uh, you, you will go through uh, who doesn't like you. You will go through the boyfriend that ghosted you. You will go through the lecturer who didn't help you. You will go through the boss who was narcissistic. If a boss is narcissistic, does that refute you or does, does, does that deter you from working? It doesn't. Let the boss be narcissistic, mind your business, say, you know what, this is a stepping stone for me. This is a starting point for me. I am going to maximize this chance. I am going to do everything in my power to make sure that I deliver and to make sure that I deliver to the best of my knowledge. Go ahead and do, if you have excuses, let me tell you, excuses and success cannot happen in the same sentence. The reason as to why we are here, the reason as to why Adrian created this platform is that you will be successful. And I will tell you this, that you will be significant, not just successful, because success can be yours. Success can be limited. You only have an apple to eat today. You only have, you know, a kale, a kaka to take you around. You only have a nice house. When you are significant, you are able to hold other people's hands. You're able to support other people. You're, help, you're able to help their lives, okay? So I need you to be able to look into that. I want, I'm going to briefly look into the chat and see what you guys are going through and what is happening out there. But I know that when you decide to open your eyes, stop closing your eyes. Stop thinking other people know better than you. Other people are more advantaged more than you. Stop thinking other people have a better chance. They have better luck. They come from better families. Let me tell you, I have made it from zero, like from nothing, okay? God has been my help, but again, God also cannot help people who are not really, just imagine, is God going to come and hold you by hand and take you to a, to a job and give you a job? No, he is going to bless the works of your hands. He's going to bless when you walk out, when you look for that job. He's going to bless you when you stick to that job. He's going to bless you when you create a business, okay? He's going to help you when you decide to open doors and opportunities and knock on some doors. He's going to help you when you become disciplined because sometimes what we lack is the discipline. The discipline to keep going, the resilience to keep going, the grit to stay on course even when things are hard. Some of us want a soft, a soft life. When things become hard, then we throw in the towel. When things become hard, then we say, you know what, uh -uh, maybe that was not the job for me. Maybe that was not it for me. There is nothing that is going to come easy. We've had to do hard things in order to get to where we are, and we are still doing hard things, okay? So I need you to know that you have a lot of potential. You have a calling on your life. You have a purpose for which you were created, okay? I don't want you to, to think, um, you know, it's working better for everyone else. I know that we have that finger pointing um, habit. We look at others and we think they are having it better than we are having it. I told you I believed in myself. And the more I believed in myself, the more I believed I could make it, 
the more I believed I could make more money, the more I believed I could help people, the more I believed I could be impactful, the more I believed my income would increase. And let me tell you, I have seen myself go from level to level. I have seen myself go from glory to one glory to another. I have seen people's lives change because I decided to say yes to my calling. I need you to be able to find out what is my purpose? Why? Why am I on earth? Am I on earth just to eat and sleep? Am I on earth just to graduate and go back and sleep? Am I on earth just to, to be a mediocre? Average life is not going to cut it for you. It's just not going to cut it for you, okay? I want you to hate an average life. When you have an average life, everything in your life is average, okay? Even the job that you will get is average. Because every time, even the pay that you, you're going to get, how much should we pay you? Whatever you decide, I need you to be able to go out with a bargaining power. And your bargaining power is the value that you bring to the table. Your bargaining power is the confidence that you have. Your bargaining power is the belief that you have in yourself. Your bargaining power is the vision that you have for your life. Your bargaining power is to be able to open your eyes and see and never give up on yourself, okay? Uh, so uh, let me see, in case we see anything in the chat that we really need to address, please let me know so we can be able to address, but I really wanted us to conclude on uh, this chat uh, of um, the dangers of having a visionless life you are prone to accidents. I don't want you to go out there and start a life of accidents. Bumping into jobs, bumping into bosses, bumping into relationships. And when you talk about relationships, I need you to have discernment because part of discernment is also having a vision for your life. I usually tell people that if I had made any wrong turn in my life, as far as relationships were concerned, I would never have reached where I am, okay? I would never have reached where I am. Why? Because if you have a calling on your life and if you're created for greatness, you need a spouse that can be able to contain that greatness. Just imagine the kind of traveling that I do, the kinds of people that I meet, the kinds of speaking engagements, the kind of movements that I make in my life. If I didn't have a husband that is 100% supportive of the work that I do, I would never have survived. I think I would I would have I would have been on my third marriage somewhere or divorced already or something like that. But God helped me and I said no to so many people. Let me tell you so many people have hated me. I mean, they wanted a piece of me. They wanted me, but I looked at them and I was like, you know what? 5 years to come, 10 years to come. If my lifestyle changes, if my lifestyle elevates, if I need to be able to be in the rooms, to be in different countries, in the same month, maybe eight different countries, is this person going to understand? Oh, they are even insecure while we are living in Kampala, in the small Kampala here. They are insecure that every time I move out of the house or I go to office, someone agenda kunkwana, someone agenda kuntwala, they want me to change phone numbers, they want me to do this. I would never have survived. And God blessed me with a man that is very secure, very confident in himself. He has his own businesses. He has his purpose. He has his vision. And he supports mine and lifts me and encourages me and mentors me and prays for me. I have, I, I mean, that's the best blessing that I have ever received in my life. The best blessing I have ever received in my life is to have a husband who holds my hand, who supports me, who encourages me, and who prays for me, and who tells me, you can make it, keep going, keep climbing. Actually, he wants me to be more in the limelight, and he does not want to come into the limelight with me, okay? And he will tell you, he, he, he will tell you, I will do anything. I will fund whatever it is. I will help you. But where does that come from? Where does that come from? It comes from a place that, I was willing to to be to live a life with a vision. I was willing to say no to so many things. I had a spirit of discernment. And when it comes to discernment, there's somewhere in the Bible where it says that you will see them by their fruit. You will see them by their fruit. Now, the fruit, what, what is the fruit? Their actions. Someone is ghosting you, you're busy chasing them. Someone is not calling you back. You're busy chasing them. 
someone does not love you, you're busy holding on to them. Someone, as in, someone does not, when you tell them even a slight bit about your vision and what you want to do in your life, they do not understand it's like you're speaking Chinese, okay? You want to be able to work, to be international, to be able to climb, to, to climb the corporate ladder. You want to be a CEO at some point, but you're still entertaining uh, people who have no vision in their lives. And those people are going to pull you into their ditch of disbelief and a ditch of lack of confidence and a ditch because some of those people feel like the need to pull you down in order for them to mean something or to be something. So I need you to look out for people who are narcissistic, people who are toxic, or people who are just insecure, generally insecure about their lives. Because if they're insecure about their lives, they are never going to be secure. Because every time they will think you're out there, you're, you're, you're with men or you're with women, or uh, they, they must be able to, to spy on you. They must be able to tiptoe and peep into, their, into your life. They cannot be able to trust you. How are you going to work in this ruthless world if you are hooking up with people or if you are getting into relationships with people that are not willing to build you or they are willing to tear you down? Okay, so I need you to have your eyes open at every angle in your relational intelligence, in your emotional intelligence, in your financial intelligence, okay, in your spiritual intelligence. Guys, one thing that has helped me to where I am, I will tell you, God. Everything, after everything is said and done, I could never have done anything because my pillar, number one, was prayer. That even when I was at campus, I would pray. I would pray for, for the jobs that I will do, I will pr I would pray for the kind of life I would have. I would pray for my marriage. Even when I was not in one, I would pray for literally everything in my life. And some I didn't know how it would turn out. But let me tell you, I am living a life of answered prayers right now. Everything I ever prayed for, God has done in my life. Everything I have ever prayed for, God has done in my life. So I don't want you to put aside the power of prayer. Everyone in this world gets their power from somewhere. So it's possible that your neighbor could get to, could be getting their power from shrines. Okay? So where are you getting your power from? Wherever you will go, everyone is getting, getting their power from somewhere. So I need you to be able to understand and demarcate your source of power. If it is God, then be serious about God. Be serious about prayer. Be serious about believing in yourself. Be serious about who he says you are. If he says you're my child, you're the upper of my eye. If he says, I knew you before you were formed, I have good plans for you. Can you for a moment believe that indeed God has good plans for you so that you can also believe in yourself to show up and commit and be determined because you know your source is God and he's not going to leave you, not in any circumstance, okay? So I need us to be able to step out onto this plate, but number one, have a life that is full of vision. Don't create accidents in your own life, in your relationships, in your jobs, in your businesses. Because I had to get to a place and say, okay, I don't want, because I began, when I left Chambogo, I said I didn't want to be, to be employed. Okay. I wanted to do my own thing. God helped me to start my own business. Okay. Now, along the way, I became an independent contractor to NTV, to NBS. Not, I told them, you cannot pay me the money that I want. I told them, I, I looked for those of you that know George jo, uh, jo Chigozi at NBS. I, mean, I told him, you cannot pay me my worth. I can't. Because one speaking engagement, I charge four millions. That is an hour. So how much are you going to, to pay me to be on your TV? You're not, you can't pay me my, you can't afford me. So I cannot uh, sign a contract with you. I cannot be your employee. I am an independent contractor, okay? So when we agree how much I am, I am paid because you can't pay me my, my, my value or my, my, my worth, then I can be able to do what I need to do and choose when I need to do it. And indeed, when time came and be I became busy, I went back to him and told him, you know what? I've become so busy. I don't think I can do this anymore. So you realize that if you have a vision for your life, you decide the one, the why, the when, and how you get out of some of the situations. So I need you to be able to have a life that is full of vision. Let me tell you, it is possible. If I could be who I am right now, and I am aiming, I am not settled, 
guys, I am not settled that right now, currently, I'm even in prayer and fasting about my life and about how next year is going to turn out because I know that it's going to be crazy busy and I need to be able to prepare myself right now as I end this year to be able to prepare myself for next year. And you would say, perhaps I have a kind of a good life. Maybe I would have said that, you know what, it's enough. Where I am is enough. No, it is not enough. I'm going for bigger, I am going for better, and until I can be able to, to do the things that I envision and the things that I have dreamt about and be on the global stages that I have dreamt about, I am not settling for anything. So where are you? What are you doing? Build your brand. Put in your all your effort. Do something with your life. Let your life count for something. Okay? Okay. I, I, if I start speaking, I'll speak for the rest of the day. I need to have some questions. I know that if I switch into the chat, uh, Brother Adrian, in case you see any question that needs to be answered, can you be able to read it out for me? Because I know if I cross into the chat, then I'll have to change my camera into a different uh, angle, which is not just going to be out for me. Wow. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Hilda Bahati, for that amazing uh, morning lecture, morning talk. Uh, the class is full to the brim and I'm still admitting I've been doing two jobs here. I'm taking notes as well as I'm admitting people. Uh, thanks for those who are watching via YouTube uh, and then those who are watching live uh, physically at Chambogo University. We have various universities on board, various universities, people from Macquarie University, MOBS, Kampala International University, people from other degree awarding institutions and other institutions. Thanks very much. For coming through doctor before uh, uh you will have a break uh there is something um a girl what do you speak to a girl who is having uh, issues with uh relationship vis-a-vis -vis completing campus uh should they chase their career first their parents are asking them okay now degree a wet day so kati are you coming with the muko should we do a, a two-in-one graduation party with the kwanjula or you um Visible, visible. So girls come always to us wondering now this pressure of moving out of campus and this red relic of when you leave campus without a boyfriend, you are doomed. So I want you to speak, you know, girls, yes, they are searching for jobs, but again, they have issues when it comes to relationships, especially when they see their counterparts getting married at, a, at 23, 22, they're saying, oh my God, am I doomed? Will I make this? What do they do? Should they chase career first? Or if they're lucky, they also chase the marriage. Can you speak to that girl? Okay. Okay. So now, ladies, I, I need you to, uh, to, to pay attention. There is no timeline for marriage. And no one ever say that you should be married by this age or this is what should happen. And no one is in your life to see the things that you have gone through, the heartbreaks, the tears, and... No one should be able to dictate when you get married and who you get married to. You decide when you are fully ready and willing to commit because relationships comes, come with a baggage. Every relationship comes with a baggage. It's not all rosy. You know, before you're in a relationship, you're thinking, oh, now I have got someone to love me. Now I've gotten someone to... But remember, it is work. Relationship and marriage is work. You have to be able to find out whether you're compatible. You have to be able to compromise on certain issues. You have to be able to stand your ground on certain issues. You have to choose and say, is it working for me or it's not working for me? Then you have to let go of certain things and certain relationships at some point. So it is work. But again, what use is a relationship for you? If you have not even worked, you don't have any money. Because there are those of you that are already in a relationship and it's a good relationship. And you can actually look for a job while you're in that relationship and you can grow in that relationship. And I'm not saying run away from your relationship. If it's a good relationship, this person gives you time for personal growth, then go ahead, love on them, pursue your career, let them encourage you, let them mentor you, let them uphold you, let them pray for you and let them wish you well. If you are in one, that is good. If you are in a relationship, however, that is heavy for you, you've been dragging it 
for so long and it's just not working out. You're in tears. You're going to do your exams and this person is ghosting you. They are already cheating on you, but you're holding on for dear life. I don't know over near Tuloga, over at Tuloga, Charlie Muksabo. You're holding on for dear life and you're thinking now, if I lose him, I'm about to finish campus. What will I do? Maybe I will never get anyone else. So you're holding on to a bad relationship. Some of you are being beaten in those relationships. Some of you um, are being insulted in those relationships and you're holding on for, for dear life. That is so wrong. I need you to be able to step up and decide. If something is not working for you, cut the rope. Let it go, okay? So that you can have the time to concentrate on your personal growth. And when a good person walks into your life, let me tell you, you will know it. A relationship that gives you the peace of mind. You're not supposed to be on your tiptoes, walking on eggshells, saying, if I say this, what will he say? You are supposed to be yourself. So if you're in a relationship where you are constantly editing yourself, in in order to remain in a relationship, you know, so that I can remain in this relationship. As in we are being stupid and we are being foolish and we are being belittled to objects, okay? And you're belittling yourself. So I need you to be able to decide. I need you to be able to decide that you have value in you, okay? And then you decide when to allow a relationship. You have the key. You say yes or no. So you can decide. I've told you I've said so many no's. To the someone texts me to a bond, oh, you're beautiful. Uh, I, I, I want you. Bichu, bichu. Can I buy you a car? I'm like, you know what? I am on foot. I even don't know what I'm going to have for supper, but I cannot trade my future. I cannot trade my future. I would rather go and eat biberengi at night and sleep than committing to a relationship that I know has, has no future for me. And so many of them say, oh, you're a wise car. Let's see where you're going to end up. Who is having the last laugh? I am having the last laugh. For everyone that I said no to, I know up to now they still hate me. Right now they still, I think they say, oh, if I was in her life, maybe I would have been, you know, this and this. And I said no to so many of them. But let me tell you, I am so glad I said the no's. Because when I go to say a yes, I said a yes, and let me tell you, I have never regretted a single day in my life. And guess what? I got married late. According to the standards of the world, I got married late because I got married at 34 years old. So some of you are 19. Oh, I'm not seeing any man. You're crazy. Oh, I, I'm, I'm at 30, 23. Let me tell you, by 23, you even don't know what you want. You don't know whether you want American Heights. You don't know some of you are, ah, you know, I will say this because like who tested them for you? Some of us are really, really, really crazy. So not your auntie, not your mother, not your father should ever decide who you marry and when you marry. You decide when you are ready and you decide when you have, when the right person walks into your life. And the season of life you're in, some of you are depressed. Cut could depression or take home with Heal, take time and heal. Adrian, news or get the whole day. Ah, <laughs> uh, actually, that's very amazing. And uh, the messages here are very many, um, but most of them are really sending you, uh, um, yeah, they are giving you your stars. Thanks for the job you've done today. Um, so it's a great battle here. Actually, ladies, today we are talking about uh, uh, navigating life after campus, but I think next time you will have to, to pay some money so that we can invite Dr. Hilda because getting half a full hour, that's four million. So uh, she will come back and talk about relationships because it's indeed a very... <laughs> Very many. I think people are, are, are sitting, are walking on eggshells, just like how you put it. Um, but let me get to you some more three comments, and then we call it a day or at your side. Um, 
Okay, some people are saying that uh, the problem uh, we go, I think this is Nakato ratio that we have, we get to jobs, but people are giving peanuts, especially if they discover that you really hard working. So how do we handle that? Uh, that is uh, is a concern, doctor. How would okay. you really, uh, answer that? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, I told you that uh, for all our companies, I do the hiring myself because I could not. I I could I I I wanted to uh, to know the kind of people firsthand that I am dealing with and the people that are working in the companies so that I can have a sense of control. And I will tell you that as companies, we take our we we, we take care of ourselves. Uh, let me just give you an example that when COVID hit, okay, so many companies took care of themselves by do I mean laying off some workers by cutting salaries by like doing so many things that means we anticipate for example right now I'm even uh tomorrow I have called for a meeting for all the board members for our company and all the top management team and guess what we are planning for next year and then I would uh, on Friday I will have a meeting with the finance team to also speculate and understand how is next year looking how much money are we giving to every department and how much money are we giving to salaries okay so that means that then we are going to determine ani gwetu sigaza ani agenda ani gwetu ongerako and all that why because we are taking care of ourselves now if we, the companies are taking care of themselves that means you need to take care of yourself number 1 that means your bargaining power you have to know that, okay, I'm giving you value. And if I'm giving you value and you're giving me this kind of money, I want you to look around on the market before you even make any decision. Look around on the market. Who is being paid what that is doing the same job that you are being paid, that, that you are doing? Chances are you are leaving a job that is a bit paying. For example, I'll give you an example. There's someone who, uh, who quit. Uh, that is last year. He came to me. He was one of my best employees. He came to me and he was like, you know what, um, you know, add me some money. And I added him some. I, I actually gave him some money. I told him, you do a very good job. Uh, let me give you some money. And then after that, he came to me and told me that, you know what, I have gotten another uh, media house that is giving me more money. So I was giving him two millions. So he told me the media house was giving him four millions. And I told him, bring your hands. I pray for you. I pray a blessing over you that when you go, they will see the value that we saw in you. And I prayed for him. So he goes. After two months, I get to learn from even someone else. He even feared to come back to me. He was on the road. No, actually four months. They did not pay them for the four months. They worked. Remember, I was giving him two millions. He has gone to a station. They've told him they're going to pay. They're going to double the amount. And they have taken four months without paying him. And they do not have a hope of paying him. So I need you to be able to look around. Who is being paid what in the same docket? And let me tell you, the biggest way of earning, yes, you can earn through employment. When you give value, your money can keep coming up. But I need you to know that most of the, the, the decisions that you need to make about your purpose, your passion, and what you and the skills that you have. So that means you can have a side hustle while you work. So that you don't look at your ink at, at your salary as everything else. And I'm speaking from an employer's view that I know how much I pay my people. And sometimes yesterday I looked at someone's eyes in someone's eyes and told them that I know that the, um, the amount I'm paying you is not the amount I'm supposed to pay you. But that is what I have. I am not going to stretch. I have to take care of so many departments in this company. So I am going to get that is what I have. But I give you the leeway to decide, do you want to work for me or do you not want to work for me? If you don't want to work for me, you tell me now. But if you say, yes, I am going to work. That means I expect full cooperation and I expect full productivity. Why? Because you have accepted. So I don't want you to say that. Otherwise, we wanga te waka kidiza, wandi wa dete wakola, wandi wa dewa wagende walala no no nya, oba no gende kane webaka, oba you go ahead and pursue your purpose and, and build your brand and uh, you know develop your side hustle or start a business, whatever it is. So I'm speaking from an employer's viewer. I have I mean I have been employed before and I know what it means to work when you're you're being underpaid, okay? 
and my fa very first salary i think was fifty thousand back way back in the days i know what it means to work when you're being underpaid but again do you want to throw in a towel do you want to go back and renegotiate get the confidence go back and renegotiate and if they tell you that you know what we don't have it then decide the decision is in your hands. The decision to remain working even when you're underpaid is not in your boss's hand. It is in your hands. So decide. Do you want to work or you don't to work? You don't want to work. If you don't want to work, then go on and create other ventures. But if you decide to work, make sure that you give a hundred percent of what you are expected to do. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hilda Bahati. Uh, there is a message, I think, from Rutaya John that has really uh, uh, got me laughing. <laughs> so mm. he, he said that uh, Dr. Hilda is already planning for next year. For me, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. All right. You'll be <laughs> fine. Um, <laughs> don't worry. Um, thanks very much, Dr. Hilda. Um, Councillor Winfred, uh, you've raised your hand. Uh, we want to release um, yes, Dr. Bahati. Yes, only one person. I have seen like three questions. Uh, people are asking, how do I discover my purpose? Yeah, uh, that's a very okay. big uh, a big area. I don't know whether the doctor can use like two minutes and answer that. It's a very big thing. Yeah. It's okay. Let, let me wrap up in, in, in one minute. How you discover your purpose. Every one of us has a purpose, has a strength, has something. The only thing is we don't know that it is our purpose because some of us, I'll just give examples. Some of us love cooking. Some of us love speaking. Some of us love writing. Like you just have a love for writing. Some of us, like there's something that you really love. Some of you love singing. Some of you, like you have something that you really, really, really love. Some of you are people helpers. You love helping people. Okay. People come to you and you give them advice and you go and they go and it works for them. Okay. So purpose is a use that you are useful in a certain area. And then when you're passionate about it, that means you really love it. You can do it even without being paid. Now, when, how we discover purpose, number one, we ask the people in our lives. I need you to be able to ask the people in your lives, what is my greatest strength? What do you see in me that is good that maybe I have not seen in myself? Number two, how we find purpose is by trial and error. When you do multiple things, for example, when I dropped out of school, I decided to go into business. I did business. I'm still doing business. But again, there's a certain type of business that I don't do. I don't do business of you have a saloon. You have to go there every day. You have a shop. You have to balance every day. You have no, 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 no. That kind of business I cannot manage. That kind of stress I cannot manage. OK, so I had to try the different things. I tried to speak in church and I discovered I love speaking, that even if I'm not paid for it, I can speak. I love people helping, giving counsel to people and being able to facilitate their decision making. So I decided to do multiple things. I did radio presenting. I did TV presenting. I did business. I did multiple things. And then I settled and said, finally, I know what I love. And I'm just going to stick to one thing. I am going to stick to coaching and I'm going to stick to helping people, facilitating people make better choices in their lives. And that is where I am settled. Everything that is bringing money, including all my businesses, apart from real estate, I is all focusing on helping people and being able to help them. So you realize do different things. Don't say, ah, for me, I'm just going to do this one thing. I studied for this one thing, so I'm going to do it. It's possible that what you went to school for is not your purpose. You're not even passionate about it. There is one person that we went to school with, that we went to Chambogo with. He's called Derek. Derek, right now, we we graduated as, as counselors, definitely as, I mean, from guidance and counseling. And let me tell you, he's doing makeup and he's thriving and doing well in the world of makeup. So that means he gave himself a chance, okay, to go and try out different things until he found something that he really liked. So I want you to, try to, to find out different things. And I want you to sit down and ask yourself, what gifts do I have? What gifts do I have? What things, good things do I have inside of me? Ask other people. You will know your purpose. You will know your pa what you're passionate about. And let me tell you, what your purpose and your passion can turn into a paycheck. It can turn into something that you earn from. Some of you are fashion designers. You just love fashion. 
you bring clothes together, you've been selling clothes at campus, you st stuff like that. Find something that you love. You can be a boutique owner, you can be a designer, you can be anything. So I need you to find your strengths, the things that you love and things that you're inclined to and the things that you easily gravitate towards. All right, thank you very much. I told you it's going to be a crowning joy today. And indeed, Dr. Hilda, you've done us a service. Thanks very much for that wonderful. I'm going to I'm going to carry the, the, the questions forward to the next speaker. Um Canon Alice Damulida. She's going to do us a service too. So thanks very much. Uh, flowers. You can send flowers to Dr. Hilda and please, please. Um, I don't know which words to use uh, to say thank you, but uh, we are really glad that you've given us a full uninterrupted one hour uh, of such great conversation. I know you've recharged them. You've indeed someone said, ha, after Dr. Yuda's submission, I'm becoming a beast. That's it. Thanks very much. Please do so. Right now, um, it's 16 past uh, 10 a.m. in Kampala, Uganda. And for our international audience, uh, this side, it's 16 past 7 a.m. in the morning. So it's still the last lecture, season three, and we still have two facilitators. I told you it's a cup full of very many things. But Dr. Hilda has asked very, very beautiful questions. I think you, you really try to reflect on them. Are you living a vision full of visionless life? She has talked about relationships. Are you living an answered prayer for life? Have you built your brand? Very many nuggets she has thrown here and there. So that's very, very amazing. That's very, very amazing. Now, I want to welcome uh, Canon Alice Damulia. She is, um, she's going to now to tackle uh, the part, the mind of an employer today. Why she's uh, she has been in HR practice for almost over 20 years plus, and she's a director of a school, one of the big secondary schools, St. Mark's College in Amagoma. So she has done very, very, very well. She's a lady, very inspirational and motivational. I've been watching uh, her doing this uh, her craft. So, uh, Canon Alice, are you there with me? Canon Alice. Um, okay, 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 okay. She is. Uh, you can unmute. Okay. Right. Very. Um. Just in a moment. Uh, she will be coming through just in a few, um, uh, in uh, in a few. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, the floor is yours. Um. Mrs. Alice Damolida, uh, you can uh, briefly uh, tell the uh, the audience uh, briefly uh, maybe about yourself and then take it from there, the employer's mind today. Oh, 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 not yet, not yet. Are you are you here in Canon Alice people? Uh no. Okay. 
okay uh not yet okay i think she's having some bit of technical uh issue let's try to work it out and see okay don't no worries no worries no worries Okay, we apologize for that. Uh, she's trying to connect. Uh, her microphone is muted. Okay. All right, it's still the uh, last lecture, season three. Uh, please, yeah, uh, as you keep on digesting what Dr. Hilda has really uh, said to you, um, uh, as we connect to keep on digesting that, share, uh, reflect, as we try to connect, uh, Mrs. Alice. Uh, she has been on call, but uh, there's some bit of issue here. Right. Very many messages are coming in. Uh, okay. All right. Um, can one Alice try to speak and we see? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hear me now? All right. Yes, I'm. I'm getting you. I think you had an issue with, uh, an issue with your PC. Now I can hear you. Okay, great. I'm. Okay. I'm going to use my phone, and I'm going to switch off my laptop. So now you can hear that we can have only one gadget. Yeah, loud and clear. I can hear you. Loud, and clear. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would want to say, let me switch on my video briefly. I will not uh, sustain it, uh, Dr. Bahati, because uh, I'll run out of battery maybe in the process. So I'll switch on my video briefly and then I'll switch it off. Um, once again, a good morning to you all. I can see there are so many people on call. And we want to appreciate, especially the young people who are enthusiastic um, to navigate, to learn and be able to navigate in life. I want to take this point to appreciate uh, the Department for Counseling and Guidance, Ambogo University, for providing this platform for students to be prepared before they actually um, set off into the real world. Um, I also want to appreciate Adrian for thinking it befitting that invites me once again to be part of this uh, session. I'm one person of young people who loves preparing people, uh, young people for the future, because I know how important it is. I also want to take this opportunity to appreciate Patty uh, for a great job that she's done. I've actually been available on call since the uh, since morning at 9 a.m. and I've listened in intently uh, to what she has been able to share with us. So I want to appreciate her so from speaking from her heart, sharing her experience. And uh, I know that lots of nuggets have been picked along the way in uh, relation to what um, happens in the world. I also have loved her resilience uh, when she talked about she had nothing to eat, she steps out of the way, but she also strongly believes in herself. 
And I think that is the mindset that we need to carry as people. Getting out into the world, everybody will tell you how difficult it is, how um, everybody wants a softer life. But I would want to tell you, you are not going to find anything out of convenience comfort. Everything is hard work and everything is an uphill task. So to prepare ourselves to navigate into the future, these are the things, some of the things that we need to look into. Um, Adrian said I should uh, introduce myself uh, a little bit once more. Uh, my name is uh, Alice Damlila and by the grace of God, I am a canon uh, in the Church of Uganda, a lay canon. And um, I'm glad. I, I, I think that is one of uh, uh, the the highest uh, accolades that you can have as a lay person uh, within the Church of Uganda. So I'm grateful to God for that. Um, I'm a teacher by profession, but unfortunately, a teacher who never actually taught. Um, the way I navigated through life is uh, simply because every step of the way, uh, people were able to speak into my life. I was a listening child and I really wanted to know what it takes when it comes to adult life. So I, I, I sat a lot at the feet of powerful mentors for me. And um, immediately after I finished university, a week, a week after I'd finished university, I got a job. I was able to go back to Makere uh, and I was teaching language. I was in the Institute of Languages as a teaching assistant. And at, at that time, the Institute had opened um, uh, it had opened a kind of a project for international students who had come to learn English and then join the university. So I was there for a period of three years. And yet, and even while I was there, they head hunted me and I joined the ICRSC, uh, International Committee of the Red Cross, where I worked for 15 years uh, as the human resource. So I fully understand, step into that world of uh, the world of work. And probably on that note, I would want to say that to uh, to give um, there is Nakato. I think it was Rachel who mentioned that, uh, you you go to a place, you work so hard, but you're actually given peanuts. And I would want to encourage whoever is out there working so hard, seemingly is being given peanuts. I would want to tell you that your next employer is watching. Your next employer is watching out for those qualities that they are looking for. And when I was in Makere, even while I was a student, when the Institute of Languages, when they opened up that project, that my lecturers are the ones who proposed my name that I should be go, I, I should be able and actually teach. And when it came to joining ICRC, it was one of my students who was a spouse to the administrator at that time, who proposed to the husband that I have seen some can do a great job because they wanted to open up the human resource department at that time. And I, I didn't know because I had not studied human resource. I was a teacher and a teacher of English, a, a teacher of literature. So fast forward, my bargaining power was not actually in speech. It was in action. So your bargaining power could be should be more in action than in speech. It's unfortunate because my laptop has failed to work, so I cannot be able to share my, my presentation, but I'll just uh, take us through. And the topic that I was given today is the empty mind today. So Dr. Bahati has mentioned some very pertinent um, things when it comes to the employer's mind today, when it comes to the employer's mind today, there are things that are quite critical for us. And one of the things that is critical is the DNA of the institution. Somebody will say it differently. You need to get, you need to engage the employer's agenda. And as she was speaking, she kept mentioning that I'm restructuring, I'm employing, I make sure I am on the panel for the interview, I recruit people myself, because at the end of the day, I see somebody who will fit into the DNA of the institution. So it doesn't matter where you are. It could be a government institution, but the boss at that time, the person who is recruiting you at that time, would want somebody who will fit into their DNA. So that is very, very critical. And I will tell you, when it comes to institutional DNA, there is so much 
that is in, 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 in resemblance more than contra contradictory. So this is what we are going to share today, the employer's mind today. Now talking about the employer's mind today, I loved, she said, a visionless person will be injured, will be prone to injury. And I will tell you, until now, you are transiting from university. And all that is you're more cautious about is probably to get your degree. But it's also critical that you create a mental disposition. You create a, um, a future. Uh, I love uh, what Peter uh, Drucker says, that the best way to predict the future is to create it. What is your mental picture about the future that believes in you? What is your mental picture? You need to have it with clarity. If you don't have vision, like scripture says, people without a vision, they perish. When you are visionless, you are prone to injury. You are bound to make ex very many mistakes. There are things that you tell yourself and say, I will not go to the Arab world to work as a maid. And it's very clear for you. There are things you are speaking into your life and say, that one I will not do. So as you do that, it gives you clarity of what you want to engage with. There are people who are easily saying that, are quickly saying that I want to be my, my own employer. I want to be self-employed. But if you listen in to what Dr. Bahati said, she wanted to be her own employer, but she allowed to be employed. Her first employment is where she earned 50,000. You need to engage with somebody who is already in the field to learn from them. So talking about um, employment, you need to set very clear goals for yourself. And I'll tell you, as an employer, and I'm taking on somebody, I will know someone who is on that interview panel, who has clarity of thought of their, where they want to head. Even if they are coming in there and the purpose is actually to get a job, I will still see somebody who has a purpose for their lives, who is heading somewhere. I will tell you that a person that you get on board who is visionless, who doesn't have clear goals for themselves, they are also trying to put the company down because they don't even know what they want. So we are creatures of habit. You need to see yourself before you get into employment. Sit down and have some reflection. These days I call it inflection. Sit down and have some reflection and build self-awareness. What do I want to see? And I want to ask us who are on call, do not have small vision, visions. Have the grandest vision for your life. So as you set out to go into the world, you have set very clear goals and you're working towards them. And you say, whatever job I am going to get the moment I get out there, I am going to work so hard that as my next employer is watching, I'm going to work into my next job. And that is the goal of clarity. You're not even looking at the money. You're looking at building your skills that you become an attraction to the world. What an employer would want to see that each time you have obstacles within systems, there are opportunities for you to learn. I'm this kind of person when I hit a snag, when I'm stopped in my tracks, it is a moment for me to reflect where am I going wrong. If something is seemingly so smooth for me, I begin to go, to go out of my way looking for other ventures, looking for to explore my capacities. So I don't see obstacles. I see opportunities to be able to demonstrate my capacities. So prob probably they're giving you very little money uh, to go to work. And instead of complaining to your boss, you tell your people or you tell your colleagues those who are coming from the same place that you're coming, but we can use this as a routine to actually do our exercises. I remember one time when I, I was uh, in ICRSC and we had started building St. Mark at that time and the resources were not, uh, you know, the resources were being divided because it was competitive. We had a, a dream 
that we would had we had we had to finance and yet we had a life to live so i i talked to one of my colleagues who was staying in cheva and because we are living and we are living in kanyanya and i told her you know what joy i want to use this moment especially when my children were on holiday i want to use this moment to to walk back home and use it as a moment of exercising my body and a few of my friends, because they would give us a bus to drop us in one day, I said, I wonder, guys, too far. But let's take a stroll. Before we know it, other people started joining us to take a stroll back home. And it was enjoyable. We talked about many things. I was able to see many things along the way. So for me, it seems to be an obstacle that I don't have probably enough money on me. But it was an opportunity to actually build relationships with my friends. The other thing that we get into the workplace with, we come in with a mindset of thinking that we know it all. Oh, we are graduates, and probably my supervisor is a diploma, is a diploma person. Oh, my actually, my boss didn't go to university. My dear, that person has been long there enough to know what they are supposed to do. You don't bring value in the employment world simply because you went to university. You bring value because you have added value to yourself. And it's that opportunity to get, when you get into the employment world, to sit at the feet of the person who is actually employing you and choose to learn from them. Because we only bring value to the marketplace. The marketplace is interested in value and it needs 10,000 hours to gain mastery. So you need to be committed to transformation and it will be evident. I have seen employers that once they know they have an extremely good employee and this person actually wants to move on, they'll go out of their way and give them a blessing because they can't pay them enough. And I think Dr. Bahati said it. It's only that this young man made a bad decision. They made a promise and I can, I can just tell you, he did not go through the proper process of recruitment. Somebody proposed, they brought him on board, because it's very unlikely that an employer will engage you, a serious-minded employer will engage you, promise you a salary with a contract, and they actually can't pay. So let's commit to transformation. And as we are making all these decisions on our part, we are also speaking our salary. I will tell you that mastery brings excellency, and excellency dictates the terms of employment. So. Commit yourself to transformation. It's going to be evident. That is why they talk about headhunting. It means that you are worth headhunting when somebody has watched you work. Because people are not willing to pay for our mistakes. It is only people who pay less money that are willing to pay for those mistakes because they cannot even afford those people who are highly paid because they bring mastery to the marketplace. They can seek for their consultant services, but they may not have them as full-time employees because they are very expensive. And like we had this morning, people are taking care of their institutions first. But I'll tell you, if you take care of yourself first, if you have very set clear goals for yourself, you're going to gain mastery and the world is willing to pay for mastery. The other thing that we need to, to learn for, for ourselves is that we cannot be convicted. I saw here on, on, on the chat, many people are like, wow, I think I'm going to hit the road running. So, but you cannot do it. You cannot have a deep conviction and at the same time achieve it conveniently. These two do not live on the same block. They don't live in the same house. In your house as an individual, if you have conviction, you cannot talk about convenience because success is not achieved comfortably. So you set clear goals. And in these clear goals, you are also carrying values of discipline, of resilience, of determination, and say, I am going to make it. When you have a clear goal and say, I'm starting small, but I'm making steps to get my bigger dream. And also to remind yourself and every employer is out there watching a young man applying themselves to achieve success. And every employer will give you a blessing. If they can't pay you, they'll allow you to be. So that you can go where you can excel. 
So an employer's mind speaks is, I could miss you, but I can't afford you, but I'm willing to bless you. Why? When you go out there and suck, whatever you learn, you can even bring home and say, this is where I started. I am willing to bless uh, the people where I started. You can have a conversation at the table with your employer. Exchange ideas, your former employer, because you want them to become better. And they'll always celebrate you and you always celebrate them. So we get into the employment space. Become of value. The person who is employing you first. And it doesn't matter. I have a friend, just like Dr. Bahati said, he kept saying that for me, if I lose my job, I would start from anywhere. Even if it means sweeping, I will sweep so well that my employer will be will feel ashamed to keep me as a sweeper and will give me another job. And probably at this point is to tell you that in the employment world, we could have the academic credentials, but we look at the attitude of a person who is willing to be, to be able to be empowered with additional skills. In my former work in the human resource space where I was, I would tell you would get somebody who is a truck driver. But a truck driver with a great attitude could easily become a field officer. And that's the point I would encourage them, go back to school. Go back to school, learn something. What do you have? I said I'm a senior six. Go back and graduate. And that's like that every opportunity that shows itself up, you are prepared for it. So whatever we've gone through, that is our hindsight. When you have we are coming from a background of scarcity. Do not carry a scarcity mindset and limitation. This is the farthest I can go. No. Inform yourself that probably if I'm the first graduate in my, in my family, or if I'm the second, or even if we are all graduates, what does it speak for us? And what does it speak for me? It will give you understanding. It will give you to know the current circumstances. Jobs are scarce, right? But people of value are more scarce than the jobs available. So have the foresight and take the next steps. You say, I'm going to build my value. Whichever employer will take on me, they would want to hold on to me. I'll leave that employment space and I would want them to miss me. That every time that I show up, they're willing to take me on. That is the power of having very set, clear goals. This will inform your decisions, but it will also mean that your success is your obligation. It's about you. It's about you. Don't go into an institution and you say, they're not paying me enough. That's why I'm not doing this. No. The moment you build value, your employer will automatically feel obliged to give you a better pay if they can afford it. And if they cannot afford it, if because they are in the networks that you are not, they can recommend you to a better job. I remember when I was working with the ICRSC, one of my, my supervisors at that time, she's uh, deceased now. She was um, from Yugoslavia and she was my immediate boss. She proposed to me and said, but Alice, you're doing so well. Why don't you join the UN? And said like, which, which, and I said like WFP, they are looking for a human resource. I can recommend you. And I told her, no, I am not leaving this place. And she asked me why. I told her employment is a package. By that time, I was a young mother, a nursing mother. I was doing my master's. I needed to be close to my family. And I told her, Lydia, this is employment is a package. Because I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be stable. So I told her, they can send me to Karamoja. It means when I'm in Karamoja, I cannot access my children. I, can nurse my, I cannot nurse my children. I cannot be there to manage my marriage. I cannot, uh, you know, finish my master's degree. It will not be possible. And she picked it from me that everybody would come on board. And even when we we're doing the recruitment, she would say employment is a package. So it is very easy when it comes to restructuring. It is very easy for us to lay off if somebody is only focusing on money. We should focus on so much. Employment is a package. On top of that, it was so close to my, my, my home was so close to my workplace so that I could drive home and feed and breastfeed my children at lunchtime. So I would breastfeed my, and that is what I loved. 
So she celebrated me for that. And this is what happened because I was doing so well. And I'd had that insight that employment is a package. They gave me a higher salary. So I didn't even have to move to look for another employer. So bring value. Young people, while on this call, while you're setting clear goals for yourselves, bring value to the table. Employers celebrate value. The other thing that I would want to say, in addition to that, it is our work ethics, our professional ethics. All bosses reward diligence, and diligence lies in the extra mile. What extra services are you offering the institution? Are you doing the bare minimum? For example, I'm in a school environment now, and then somebody comes and all that they do for me is to teach, mark, assess, and get out of school. I will never value that person to the level that I would value somebody who may be even struggling, probably, in what they are called to do, but is giving me so much value. For example, it's supervising the children or having an additional skill or uh, doing duty well, things that require administrative, an, administ an administrative eye. So everything that we do, whatever job you have gotten, look around you and ask yourself, where is the extra mile for me? Where is the extra mile for me? Even if it means that everybody shows up at eight, is it possible for you to shop up at seven so that the offices are open at seven? No boss will keep a poor performer. So if you're going to be there, you're doing the bare minimum and expecting a great salary, I want to tell you no boss is going to pay for the ordinary. We pay for the extraordinary. The other thing is to execute our tasks diligently and excellently. Look back. They've just given you a small, they've, write this invitation letter. Make sure that when you get to that and you write that invitation letter, that your boss will, that will not have anywhere to put a pen to edit it. That they can build the trust that each time they give you a report to write, you write it so well. And they can anchor into your energies. They can anchor into your abilities. Work ethics for the young girls on call. Avoid the myth that having a relationship with your boss will help you keep the job. Believe me, as an employer, the moment that happens, they are looking for a way to ensure you exit. Because after that experience, you begin, your presence brings shame. So they, they want to discard that memory as fast as they can. So avoid that myth that you're going to keep the job. Say a firm no. They can even make the move fast, but say a firm no. Value yourself. The other thing is that when you are getting into the employment world, I want to encourage you. And some of you are actually working maybe in your parents' shops or auntie or, um, uh, you know, smaller institutions. Because all of us, that's where we start from. Learn as much as you can from that first employer. How do they do their things? What do they do that is helping them excel? Some of you are working with your parents. Some of you are working with, you know, maybe friends. Some of you have actually gone to farms. It is well. It is well wherever you are. What are those people doing so right that speaks success for them? So learn as much as you can from your first employer. Because when you go to your next employer, they want to ask for your achievements first. Nobody's willing to pay for mistakes. That is why in the school space, I would say, I want an experienced teacher. But these days, we don't even want an experienced teacher. Because you talk about experience and somebody's feeding you with the years of service. We don't want years of service. We actually want achievements. What have you done differently? So have a good attitude towards learning with your first employer, wherever you are. Even if somebody has taken you to a farm and you hate even that, what can you learn from them? What skills do they have that, they are, that, that those skills are speaking success for them? 
The other thing, uh, like uh, we're told this morning, we are in an era of information explosion. We are, an, we are in an era of technology. There's so much that technology can do for us. There's so much information around and about us. Polish your skills. There are so many online certificates that you can do and learn. Instead of spending so much time on Facebook, spending so much time on WhatsApp, spending so much time on Instagram, learn a skill using the technology that you have. Put that data to good use, right? Your academic credentials may be excellent, even if you have a first class, but believe me, you need more. And then the other thing is to talk about who we are. That is why we ask for references. And these days we actually go ahead and do a background check. We go and do a background check. We go onto the social media pages. We see what you're posting. We see what kind of person we, you are because we can read all into that. We can read into that. And then we know, okay, this is the person who would want to engage. People these days do not want to pay uh, for, for, they don't want to pay for mediocrity. They don't because it is a tough world out there. It's really a tough world. People want to pay value. It should be value for money at all costs. So we do the background checks to find out what kind of person this one is. We'll make call, phone calls to, uh, I mean, on those people who are your references. In the process of the interview, we are going to engage you and allow ourselves to look into your behavior. So I would want to tell you, you could have excellent qualifications. Recently, uh, we were interviewing a gentleman, first class, excellent degree, um, had had lots of uh, publications because it was a high uh, uh, a job that required a, a very high qualification. But I'll tell you, the amazing part was his character. It is so shameful that we asked him a few questions in reference to integrity, and he didn't stand up to the taste. So we will hire you for your qualifications, but we will fire you for your character. Some of you get into these workspaces and you look down upon these employers. They are paying you, they are putting food on your table. They are, and you will not survive a great deal. So you have to build your character in the workplace. Avoid a workplace politics. It is not, it is not your space. You are there to work. Then why are you working hard with, with other employees to bring down your, your immediate superior? Why are you interested in that? You are there to work. And yes, just to re-echo, uh, when Rachel said, I'm being paid very poorly. Uh, very poorly. That the vast job will not pay you highly, but your investment in acquiring skills and competencies will earn you the job that you crave for. Like I said, and I'll say it again, as you work, your next employer is watching. And you don't know who that next employer is. As you work, your next employer is watching. So allow yourself to learn and learn and relearn and always carry a learning uh, mindset. Now, we are moving faster. Uh, let me look at my time. Okay, it's our time is far spent. I've already talked about creating a positive mindset, but also I want to talk about the aspect of time. And I would want to say that as young people, we always imagine we have a lot of time. But let me tell you, when you start to work or when you are looking for a job, good people manage your time. Have um, a free of charge engagement every month, the Alumni Empowerment Forum, where we invite different people to speak to the students. But I've realized that now so many people, uh, many people from different life actually engage because they feel it very fulfilling. They share with their children, their grandchildren and so on. And then one of uh, our students called me and said, you know what, madam, the Alumni Empowerment Forum uh, happens at 7 a.m. Can we move it at 9? Because for me, at 7, I'm still sleeping. Can you imagine a young person talking about sleeping at 7 a.m. in the morning? Time is our greatest resource. Do not abuse time. While you are still young now, your time well, if you do not have, I have seen young people who would come and tell you, I'm ready to work for free. But as long as I'm out of home and I know here I'll not even be working for free, I'm going to be learning skill before even I think about money. I will tell you, 
that money that we crave so much for in a day mm -hmm. when you have that money on you and you have made it and the and the the it's paying for the value your value you can buy a house you can buy a car you can do whatever it takes to achieve what people think that i need to get the money now to achieve that first build your value and let the world pay for that value so just to let us know that opportunity meets prepared people and you have to be prepared in all respect you prepare in language you prepare in your manner of presentation you prepare in your speech you prepare in uh in, in in your time management prepare so well that when somebody uh engages with you they want to keep around you and we have all this information around us to actually um be be able to become better people so i would want to say manage your time well because we don't build muscles in a day it is a lifetime experience so if you're losing out on time today, for example, if you want to read your book, you read a book, start today and do it well. If there is something that you want to change in your lifestyle, for example, punctuality, start today. If you want to avoid bad relationships, start today. So that you say, I want to be around like-minded people. So, I'm going to make a better person. so let me start today. So let's manage our times well by creating a very positive mindset. I want, I know where to go. I've already set my goals. I want to go to the global. I want a global, I want, I don't want just to be successful. I want significance. That's what I'm looking out for. So I start today by managing my time well. So the power is in doing and being part of the game. Be among the people who are managing time well. You have an employer, the employer, every employer celebrates a person who keeps time. Every employer celebrates someone who is improving their skills. Every employer celebrates a person who has goals we are going to ask you what how do you, you see how do you see yourself in the next five years how do i see myself in the next because you're in a school space i will have a school really we know that you never have made enough money to have a school in five years we know for sure but what you say start with what you can do and say i'll be the best teacher in this new curriculum or i'll be the best teacher in my you know in my, I'll be in my field of expertise, my field of endeavor, not expertise, my field of endeavor. Maybe I'm a geography teacher or a literature teacher. I want to have the best results for that year. Reach out to the low hanging fruits before you actually think of the big. Uh, the, you're, you're thinking, that like, yes, I'm thinking of building a school and I'll actually do it. But let me start with the low hanging fruits. So, Define yourself. Like we're informed, we need to build a brand. Build a brand. Define yourself. With the first employer, I'm not talking about the second or third. I'm talking about that first employer and I'm talking about the employer's mind. Build a brand. Talk about resilience. Talk about creativity. Talk about innovativeness. Talk about um, excellency. Talk about it. You are building a brand and you are known for that. Talk about punctuality. You are known for that. Building a brand with the first employer. Like I said, all employers, even when they're extremely evil, employers will know that now I cannot pay for this person. I can't pay this person handsomely. But I want to tell you, next employer is watching. That is the best thing, that you are not left alone. So every person, the person who comes to that space every day, for example, if I am a teacher, and I am an excellent class teacher. I have more than 200 parents who are watching me. So there is a very high likelihood that I'll be an attraction if I bring of their children and bring value into their lives, that they are going to be my next employer. So as you purpose, it could be a small salary, but as you purpose, the small world is laughing, but the big world is cheering on and saying, wait a minute, before you know it, you're going to reach your goals. Okay. The other thing I would want to say is about values. What are your values? We need integrity. We need to be available. We need to be teachable. People hear our words. People may hear our words, but they feel our attitude. I can be with you and I know you don't have a good attitude towards work without you saying it to me. 
So whatever we do, and even as we are on this call and listening in, I would have said a few things that Dr. Bahati has said. How do they resonate with you? That is what you needed to hear today. So let that help you to sharpen your mental picture towards what you want to achieve. And I would say motivation ebbs away. Probably will say it so much and you feel so motivated, but inspiration stays. What have I said that resonates with what she said? That is where you need to anchor. That is where you need to pay attention so that you can be able to get what you want to achieve. So talk about your values. What are your values? I always tell people I want to be identified with integrity. I always want to be identified with diligence, with commitment, with excellency. Those are my values. You build your brand with your values. The inner man should be able to dictate to the outside man what you are supposed to do. Those are your guiding principles. Those are the things that speak for you. So when you go in this workplace, what are you doing right with your values? Are you this person who sits around to run down the boss? Are you this person who keeps moving one rumor to another? Are you this person like, like boys who keeps hopping around with girls? What are your values? So be faithful to your values. If you choose to be a diligent person, be diligent in every respect of your life. Be available, be teachable, you know? Practice inte integrity, practice excellency. Don't do, don't give me, uh, uh, don't be a mediocre. Don't practice mediocrity. Practice excellency, give it your best. And it comes with a price, but it is worth it. And then it's also to get back into our souls. When you have integrity, when you make a mistake, own up to that mistake, take full responsibility. I erred in this, but I'll tell you, a mistake will make, Humble, better than an achievement that makes you arrogant. You have achieved and you are arrogant and you feel like, oh my God, I think I have it all. No, we are all prone to mistakes. I'll tell you, like it says, a righteous man falls down, seven rises up again. Fall down many times, but make sure you rise up. You don't stay on the ground. Rise up, get up and show up. So incubate your goals until they hurt. You have bigger goals. You are big what you think. So do not be intimidated because you made a mistake. Be Have integrity to the future that believes in you. I've erred in this, but I purpose to actually stand up and move on. Find people who can hold your hands. Find mentors. Find coaches who can actually hold your hand. Now, um, in, in the first session, they talked about spirituality. But I would want to also bring it to table that pursue spiritual intelligence, have the discernment, have the understanding for your purpose and passion in life. What do you want to achieve? Put those goals before God and pray for them. Have emotional intelligence. When people are trying to bring you down in relation to your vision, are you going to stand and begin arguing them, proving to them how actually you're going to make it? You don't have to do that. These are your goals. Have emotional intelligence to walk away from people who are actually dampening your vision, trying to bring to know, trying to tell you that you cannot achieve it. When Nehemiah went to build the wall that had been ruined, he didn't have to listen to the voices of Toby and Sanballat. He moved on. They went and built the wall. So have emotional intelligence. Pick on the battles that you need to pick on. And those you can't pick on, let go, walk away, and actually sojourn on towards your vision. Have transformation intelligence. Whatever you have learned, can you embrace it? Whatever you have learned, you embrace it and begin practicing it in small bits. Because intelligence starts from within. Your prayer starts from within. I love saying that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So mentally, what are you, what are you thinking? Scripture says that he can give us much more than we ask or think. So that even our thoughts become our prayers. As we are thinking about our visions, as we are thinking about our dreams, as we are thinking about our goals, there are prayer lines for our lives. They anchor uh, and other prayer lines protect our emotions. When somebody says you can't make it, I say, why not? 
Why not? Why are you saying I can't make it? I will make it. I remember when uh, I shared with my colleagues at uh, at a workplace at that time that we are starting at sc a school. Everybody laughed at us. They were like, are you mad? Are you competing with government? How much money do you have? And we are determined. We had a deep resolve that we are actually going to build a school. And I'll tell you, one of them finally walked up and said, just tell me all these things. How come you've done all these things? But we are very, very intentional about what we wanted to achieve. Because for us, it meant we are not going to just retire from employment. We have to retire into something that will keep us active until we actually part ways with this world. So it is critical. People are going to bring you down. You are doing that small job and people are laughing at you. But stay clear-headed and say, so this is just my first job. I'm learning as much as I can. My next employer is watching. So intelligence starts from within. Character is formed in obscurity and values will uphold that character. So I just want to take us back quickly. What are your dreams? Write them down for yourself. What are your aspirations? Write them down for yourself. What is your identity? Your brand, what brand are you trying to build? I, I strongly tell people, I build a brand of integrity. You know, Canon Alice, dumb leader, you says dumb leader, you know, Mama told me, you, everybody should speak one language. She is a woman of integrity. She is diligent. She loves excellency. She's committed. That is what it should speak for you. And I'm not saying that it's going, you're going to build that muscle in one day. It should be a lifetime achievement. In other words, what are you known for? What are your values? So transformation is a, and we are all becoming like Michelle Obama says. And we are all picking on this. We are all being empowered this morning. But it's to ask yourself, how much am I willing to put into practice? It is only what you put in practice that will make you relevant in the spheres of influence. You may hear, clap your hands, celebrate. If you don't put it into practice, it will never open the doors of the spheres of influence. So have a long perspective, long-term perspective of your life. Be consistent. Be consistent to your purpose. Be consistent. It, it is only consistency that will yield the results that you want to see. Be determined working towards becoming that person. Initially, the, the, the picture that you painted for yourself initially, uh, work hard uh, towards that, uh, that person. So um, I just want to add, be resilient, invest in yourself, acquire as many soft skills, navigate conflicts and stressful situations, navigate them. You don't have to get involved in everything. No, like we're told, your ex excuse. Why do you navigate and say, no, we are, bring, we, are, we are brought down by our uncle who raised us or our stepmother or our uncle's auntie? Navigate through conflicts and stressful lives. Find people whom you can talk to and be able to be empowered. So as I wind up, um, I just want to say this. Work hard on your character more. You have your academic credentials, work on your character, work on your mental disposition. Because good open doors for you where the best education cannot. And that's a given. Nobody wants to get on, uh, you know, somebody on board. Nobody wants to get anybody into their board whose character is horrible. No, that will not happen. The willingness to learn will equip you with the skills that will open doors for you. Keep that small job because it will help you finance your dream. You need that small job. You need to start from somewhere. You need to build your brand from somewhere. So as we navigate after university, there is so much that we can do. I'll just encourage us, get a mentor, get a coach to, to hold your hand, speak to somebody, share your dreams, share your vision, share your goals, and let somebody hold your hand. I celebrate um, uh, on the onset of this uh, conversation, it was mentioned that um, Dr. 
Fred and uh, Dr. Sabiti have been holding other people's hands. Find somebody who can hold your hand as you navigate towards your dream. I can tell you one thing. If others have achieved it, you can achieve it. You can make it. You can excel. You can succeed. You are born for a purpose and you are here to execute that purpose. And if you think you're going to take anybody's place up, it has already been. Position yourself because greatness is your portion. Thank you so much for listening to me. Wow. Thanks very much, um, Canon uh, Alice Damulida, for that wonderful conversation this morning. We indeed bless it. We indeed happy. We indeed humbled. Great, great nuggets have, have thrown here and there. Actually, you guys, if you are not learning, I don't know what to do for you right now. I have a lot of notes on my table. I've been noting, noting, noting. One of the uh, key issues that I've really picked, your, your next employer is watching, right? So it's up to you to do what you're supposed to do. I like that statement. Your next employer is watching. Ah, okay. You always hire people for their qualifications and you fire them because of their character. That was, you really hit hard. That was very amazing. And thanks so much. Uh, greetings to everyone at St. Max College in Namagoma. Thanks for the work you're doing for educating the uh, world. Now, it's already 11 past 11 a.m. East African Standard Time, and uh, it's already time for the next and our final presenter. But before Comrade Andrew Chamagelo comes, I, I want to pick like three or four questions for Mrs. Aris Damulida uh, right here. Let me check. Uh, let me first start with the people watching via YouTube. I see. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let me see if there is any... I'm failing to decide. Hey there, uh, thank you for this program. My issue is I'm failing to decide whether to be in business or the corporate world. One thing I am sure about is I want to be my own boss, but I'm still confused. Um, Kanoni Alice Damulida, you 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 pick that. Uh, you answer her. She's called Namugini Aisha. She wants to do business or to stay somewhere, but she's still confused what to do. What could be the cause of the confusion? Maybe fear, maybe anything else. My question is, what's the best reply for questions like, how much do you expect to earn from this job? That is from Banula Isaac. Thanks very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, very amazing people in, in our audience. We have the University Basa for Chambogo University, Mr. Bukulu Stevens Kassidi. Thanks very much for being online. The head of department of psychology is on call, uh, Dr. Henry Chibedi. The head of department of psychology of Kampala International University, Dr. Faith Nakalema, is on call. The board member of Uganda Counseling Association in charge of advocacy, Mr. Jita Emanuel, is on call. And very many other people. I've seen Mr. Gaston Biamgisha, a senior lecturer under the Department of Psychology of Chambogo University, is also on call. Thanks very much for coming through. Um, um, and only and Alice, let's first answer that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, one of the questions of the participants asked that um, I want to be my own boss and I also want to be employed, but I'm afraid. Uh, I don't know what to do. Now, many times when you want to get into uh, the scope of self employment is to ask ourselves how much do I know that in, in the event that my business grows I have enough skills with me to manage this business so many times when we choose to get self-employed immediately after school, yes it's not a bad idea, but it's all, there are two things that we need to understand not all of us are, are entrepreneurial by, we are as entrepreneurs some of us actually are called to be employed and excel in that space and actually make it and i've learned this engaging with entrepreneurs and the mind that they choose to have almost every entrepreneur sat at the feet of an expert to learn from them 
make their mistakes with this entrepreneur and then set out to do their own thing. Getting getting out there on own, like I can even relate it to marriage. Yes, you haven't been married before and it is well, but what we are speaking is that when you are in marriage, you have these old women around you helping you to navigate as a young married woman. So moving out and saying, I'm going to do it on my own. What skill set do you have that will help you navigate and manage well as you go forward? Because at the end of the day, you're paying for the mistakes. Those are the people you find. They open this business, it failed. They open another business, it failed. It failed. So like in 10 years, they are learning from their mistakes. And then finally, they get onto their feet and they, they start uh, actually running if they're resilient enough to hang in there. But I always encourage people, find a place. You have your, your goals, they are clear. You're very clear-headed. These are the goals that you want to achieve. This is the person that you want to be. This is how far you want to go. Great. Now we are saying, get a place, learn from somebody. Learn from them. When, when I'm an employer, yes, I'll pay for your mistakes, one or two. The person... Who has, who has clarity of vision, I'll tell you, you do not pay handsomely like somebody who doesn't have clarity of vision. So you come into my space, you learn from me, and then you run with your vision. So I would encourage um, uh, uh, this young lady, you may want a lawyer, yes, but you learn from somebody before you set out on your own. It will be very expensive for you to learn on your own uh yes you can choose to learn on your own but like i said that the price is a lot higher other than sitting and learning from somebody like we always say if somebody has made a mistake and i learn from that mistake then why would i have to go through the same mistake because i'm learning and that's why they say that learn uh experience is a teacher for fools why because i can learn from other people's mistakes and i avoid those mistakes for the future so i encourage you to get up work with somebody, learn from them and run with your, with your dream. Then the other person is that how much do I expect to earn? Many people have their uh, all institutions, like I say, uh, all institutions would have their own salary structure. But when you get there, they are going to make an evaluation of what you're capable of doing and they are going to give you that salary. They may give you a few benefits because they want to keep uh, them with you. They want to keep you with them. So I would say whatever salary they give you at that time, invest forward. So you say, I'm going to be this place for maybe three years. Let them pay you, challenge yourself, grow yourself. That if you want a little, they don't have a choice but to pay you a little more. In other words, they give you additional responsibilities and they pay. They give you a little additional responsibility. And, and in the moment of time, you are making a choice to say, I am growing or I'm going to be here for the next four years. And after these four years, I'm actually going to move on. That's a decision that you can make. The power of deciding is in your hands. But I encourage that you talk to people who can actually help you navigate, give you insight in the moment of time so that you can be able to make informed decisions. I think those were the questions, Adrian. All right. Thank you. Very much. All right. Thank you very much. Hold on there. Uh, Canon Alice Damulidaf, and thanks very much. We're indeed indebted. Uh, your contribution really is immeasurable. Uh, this great morning. Thanks very much, everyone who is tuned in. And for those who are watching, those the audience in diaspora, I'm seeing Isaac in Glasgow, uh, Scotland. Thanks very much for coming through. And everyone back home in Africa, thanks very much uh, for watching and being part of this great conversation. Canon Alice, you've done us a wonderful service. Uh, really, really, we are glad. So it's quite um, getting tense and we are learning. It's a marathon. We are moving very fast. And our duration, we are only remaining with uh, 40 minutes to end this lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to call on uh, Comrade um, Andrew Chiamagiru, a.k.a. Uh, Omuntu Wawansi, uh, very many names, Omuntu Wawansi, Chair, everything. Uh, Comrade Chiamagelo, you can uh, uh, proudly come through. Uh, I know you can call and take it away from there. 
Yes, keep your questions coming. You never know. Uh, we may keep the conversation ra running, but at this point, let's try to give our final facilitator time to also share. Uh, Dr. Bahat was really gave a bigger share when it comes to the girl child. Now, Comrade Andrew Chamagil also throw some nuggets along the boy child. So everything is balanced. Uh, over to you, Andrew. All right, Andrew, are you there? Okay, I think, uh, I don't know, we have, uh, I think, a similar kind of situation here. Uh, let me try to uh, really uh, get to him. All right, um, uh, Andre is coming in a few minutes. Uh, he's coming, he's still he's trying to connect. Uh, Mungule, please uh, mute your mic. Okay, is this better? Yeah, there you are. Um, good morning to everyone who is uh, watching and listening in. Sorry, I tried to to hang in here. They told me my session was starting at eleven, so what I did, I jumped out of the conference um, where I've been overseeing the. The deliberations just have a conversation with you, everyone. Wherever you are, it's 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 an honor to have this conversation. And um life after campus comes with quite a lot. 
Okay, let me just put off my camera so that I just I, I, I create another hotspot here that no one calls me here. This will be better. So I got about to buy it a bit. We are right. Okay. Edwin, can you still hear me? Yes, I'm getting you, uh, but uh, people would love to see you. Oh, God. I'm trying to avoid people who are trying to call call me. Yes, let me try my best. Okay, this is better, right? Yeah. So, life after campus. You know, when they tell you life after campus, it's 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 a scary thing. I don't know how you came to... When, when 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 you thought about this topic, I don't know if Adrian, you had a moment to think about how scary it is, but it's very scary. It's someone telling you like life after life. <laughs> that's how that's how deep it meant to me. <clears throat> so for me, life after campus, it is where real life happens. But it's so absurd that at times. That life starts before your brain like fully matures to the to the fullest it should be because neurologists tell us that our brains are in position to be fully developed by 25 years of age. Some of us leave campus when we are, you know, below 25 years of age. I, for one, I left campus when I was below 25 years. So there is one thing I want us to look at. Before you leave campus, you've been living um, to the to the script or to the mapping of your parents or your guardians or the society where you you say I'm going to leave because society says I should behave like this, I should study. And you know, society lies. Society <laughs> Society is funny. It will tell you that, you know, go to school, get a job, get married, have kids and die. That's what they tell you. If you try to look at these things, it's not as simple as it comes. Those are stories of old Chief Kakande. But I want us to just take an introspection right now. Do you as an individual know who you are? I'll be very honest with you that life after campus is extremely hard when you don't know who you are, when you don't know what you stand for, when you don't have values, when you don't have a clear mapping of your life. And, and that's why I want us to have a very great conversation today. So in the very first phase, I want us to look at this. <clears throat> what were your critical please not the choice of words i use what were your critical initial expectations and fears when you first stepped into the school if it's okay to be joking Ogamen, these were my critical initial expectations that when i get in school i'm going to learn i'm going to be this i'm going to be that and yes Take the same question and pose it on the other side, on the outside. What are your initial expectations and fears when you step into the world after school? Think about it. What do you expect? Are people going to embrace you when you're still in school and you have friends who are actually still in the workspaces or who are managers or MDs? You know, you call them and they pick their calls. Do you know that the moment you graduate and you send them a message that you've graduated, do you know that most of them don't want to engage with you? Do you expect that or you don't expect it? Because to them, you're either going to become a burden, that is one, or you are way too much of a, a liability. So I want you to write down that, that question. What are your initial expectations and fears? The first time you step out of school into the world. 
write those fears down. Now, this phase is called setting out. I'm going to break it down in two, four phases that it will be in position to help you map out. I really love to have my conversations in structures, right? So take out that first phase. The first phase is setting out. What are your initial expectations and fears when you step out of school into the world? Have them cleared out. Write those fears. Be very particular about them. Gamba chino, chicha chino, chera chino, chera Write them down. Now, in phase two, phase two, I called it exploring passions. How do you uncover your true passions and interests? And how are they going to shape your path? So I'll tell you what. The moment I stepped out of campus, I ran after my passion, and that was radio and interest. And it shaped how I think, how I see media, and possibly what I am today. So your second phase, after setting out, when you're sure of your expectations and your fears, it's going to give you clarity on how you're going to explore your passions and interests. Please, those two are different. Passions and interests are not the same. When you find time, you'll read more about them. But how are these going to shape your pathway to what you're going to become? It's going to be quite very saddening and depressing. After school, you're home alone. You're in your room alone. You are not sure what becomes of today and tomorrow. Every now and again, you see your friends saying, congratulations, now you you guys are in the digital age where you keep posting every job you're getting, every contract. I see guys putting this online. Now, that's going to put you so much into pulse mode. Like, do I serve a lesser God than them? But just take a moment and think about it. The pressures on the digital platforms and all are not yours. Explore your passions. Oftentimes, I see quite a lot of you you take more time into the churches and the mosques that to get closer to God. But while you're doing that, you need to know that time is not on your side, bro. Time is not on your side. Now, the third phase, the, the, the third phase is called facing adversity. Now, adversity, it's, um, for lack of a better word, to bring it in the Ugandan context, Things you least expected that they would happen, but they're going to happen. That's the third phase. Can you share yourself a moment where you're going to face adversity and how it is going to shape the strength you have within you? You never knew you had. Some of you after campus are going to get pregnant. And you don't know whether he will stay or he won't stay. Or some of you are going to make girls pregnant. That's a risky move, though. Very risky. But imagine a situation that's going to bring the best and the most rare strength you have as an individual. How are you prepared to face adversity? You see, after campus, if you're very lucky and you still have parents, you still think they're going to take care of you. In Africa, when we are done with school, our parents expect us to take care of them. So they are looking at you as a retirement package. Look at yourself. Are you even worth a retirement package? Look around your friends. Because the friends are the structures that help us in times of adversity. When times are not what we seem them to be. Can your friends help you discover that strength? Or they are going to help you just drown more and more into it. You are at campus. You are parting like no other. You're having branches after branches. I'll tell you what, every person you're with in those branches, after campus, they don't want to engage with you. Because for them, at that level, you expired. You need to look at yourself. How are you going to face adversity? You are lucky today, mom is there, pap is there, your brother or sister who is taking care of you. Or the organization that is supporting your education is still up and running. What happens when they pull the plug or when God pulls the plug? 
what's your game plan like? I want you to start to think like an adult, not like a child. Don't think that people are going to be there to join hands with you and they sing Kumbaya because you're done with campus. Think deeply. Think deeply. While many friends of yours are planning on their graduation parties and all, think about how much money can you mobilize to start a simple soap-making business. Start to think that way. We have a problem that in Africa, whenever we're done with our education, we immediately just want to get employed. Or we just want to get capital and we start our own businesses. Listen, I have come to know that we want so much to get capital, but we don't want to be nurtured, rather mentored. Are you willing to be mentored? And who is going to mentor you? And why are you choosing them to mentor you? What values, what skill set, what models do they have that you find extremely unique that they're going to help you stand out when you get to the other side? Think about that. While you're saying I'm looking for capital to start a business, the reason why businesses immediately after campus fail, you've not been mentored. You've not been nurtured. You're not accountable to anyone. Someone is not going to call and tell you that you failed here. You need to go again. You don't have someone who is going to put you under pressure that you need results. Now, because you lack the mentorship and because you lack the nurturing, it becomes coherent for you to fail. Think about that. That's the third phase. Expect uh, facing adversity. The first phase. Now, this is going to be a little bit good to you. But the fourth phase is about your personal growth. What are some... I want you to write down these questions. They're going to help you map out this particular life. What are some of the experiences and challenges eh, that have, in one way or the other, triggered your significant personal growth in your life? Try to look for them. Be known. There are some experiences you've gone through. Either you lost mommy or daddy or sister, or you lost your first job while you're still at campus, or you're in a relationship that uh, uh, nearly took your life, but somehow you, 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 you were saved. Thank God you didn't die. What is that one pivotal experience that flipped your entire life? And use that personal growth to inform your life after campus. It will help you, comrade. I'll go to the fifth phase. I don't want to take a lot more of your time because you've had a lot of conversations since morning. And I want this to be extremely um, conversation that you're in position to reflect. The fifth phase mm -hmm. is navigating relationships. How have your relationships, what it is that? How have your relationships, both platonic, romantic relationships or intimate relationships, how have they contributed to your self-discovery? Have you realized that you're not good at maintaining friends? Have you realized that many people leave you in life? Have you realized that since you joined campus and when you're leaving campus, you've had more than thousands of boyfriends or girlfriends? Among all these psycho people who come and go, the one denomination that is constant is you. How has that contributed to your self-discovery? In your relationships with your parents and your friends, whether platonic or intimate, what is your love language? How do you express yourself when you're happy? How do you express yourself when you're gratifying someone's work? How do you express yourself when you love and appreciate what people do? Some people have never taken time to map out their love language. They just don't understand it. What is that map of your relationship contributing to your self-discovery journey? And the sixth phase, I will call it embracing vulnerability. Have you ever been vulnerable? Have you ever been open and um, prone to damage of reputation 
to understand yourself better. Like you say, I don't know this. And people are going to laugh about it, but you're like, whether you laugh or you don't laugh, I've never told you I don't know it. I need to learn it. Have you taken time to be vulnerable? Have you embraced the vulnerability, telling people that I am less of this? I am less of that. I had a conversation with Catherine a few days ago, and she asked me a question. And she said, Andrew, how do you manage to push this far, even when you have a lot of schedules and uh, tasks to execute? And my answer was very simple. I told her that I push myself to the best of my knowledge, to what I know how to do this until when I feel I'm inadequate. Do you know what it feels to be inadequate? Have you ever felt like you're inadequate? Like if they put you before a fora of people with this kind of layer or level of understanding or exposure, like can you talk to them and convince them of who you are? Now, I push personally myself to that level that I get to the level where I am inadequate, that I have to work upon myself more and more again. That will help you. Many people have told you about purpose, passion, and money, and all that. But let's take a moment, comrade. And this is the seventh phase. Reflect on the moment where you felt a profound sense of purpose in your school life, where you felt you have purpose. I'm telling you all this because in life you must be accountable. And the reason why you've stayed in school up to today and you've studied and you want to get second class upper, you want to get first class upper, the issue is because you are accountable. Someone who is paying your tuition needs you to pass or you're going to break them. That's why you have discussion groups. That's why you're reading extensively. That's why you're researching extensively because you are accountable. Your purpose to studying is informed by your accountability model. So how has that purpose evolved now that you're going out of school? Think about it. The ladies who are listening here, are you just going to get babies? Are you just going to, to slay? <laughs> there is a new word for the young tax. We are slaying. For how long are you going to slay? To the men who are listening to me, I'll tell you for a fact, this generation is messed up when you don't have money. And time will come when money won't make sense to you. Where I am, money does not make sense to me. Is, is someone is calling in. What makes sense to me are relationships. So think about it. What are you going to do when you're done? And as you continue to map yourself out, and you map your self-discovery, your journey. Question, what see in the future? Apologies, people were calling here, but I'm still here. What do you see in the future? What do you look like? What does the future look like? Can you paint a picture of what you think your next 10, 20 years are going to be like? The reason I'm asking you that is the moment you don't understand and know what your future looks like, there is nothing you're working on. You're passing time. You're wasting resources. Time and money are resources. Contacts and networks are resources. Think about that. What does your future look like? What do your future friends look like? Who do they know? Where do they hang? Who do they talk to? What power do they have? Every generation has people in positions in particular powers. The people you're studying with, who do they talk to? Where do they hang? Where do they go? a moment to reflect on all be clear. I'll respond to this. Sorry. 
Apologies, but we will keep going. As we are looking at all this, running from here to Timbuktu and back, one thing that for sure will stay the test of time is what you're painting. You can choose to leave campus with quite very many women very many girls, they call you the boss, the chair, the manager, the stifler of the party. Five years after that, they'll find you and it will break your heart. Let me tell you why I'm telling you all this. I never had a chance for someone to tell me this when I was still at campus. It was all self-taught. I had to say, I'm not going to die of HIV and AIDS. That means I must be disciplined or I must wear condoms. Standard, I won't lie to you. That I was a saint, I didn't fuck around, bro. I was on a spree, but I made sure I was safe. That's one. Two, I made sure that I equate myself with those who are far better than I am. You'll be shocked how many people want to, to mentor you, how many people want you to become better, how many people want to see you grow. But the only challenge they have, your attitude, your belief system, your thinking, in Uganda, here we have it. Toinacho to Gamba. When you start to look at that, you'll be in position to see who you are while you're having fun. If you've not painted a picture of how old you're going to look when you grow old, life after campus will be tough. You can be beautiful now. Now, but in the next 10, you can be maybe or handsome today. In the next 10 years, you're going to quite work a lot. So think about it. Think about it. These things we're telling you today, we are here in a, in a, in a meeting of over 80 people. One thing for sure I can tell you and alert you, life hits us personally. Life hits you individually. And at times it's so wrecking and it's so breaking when no one can understand that you're actually going through this. When no one can see that it's, it's draining, but you have to move. There are days when I don't want to wake up. There are days when, when I'm drained. There are days I just want to talk to someone who sees... Me as an individual, not as Andrew Chamagero, the there, the there, the there, but just as me. And tell you what, it's lonely. It's lonely. Because people will always want to take away from you. Now, if people want to take away from you, you must always invest in yourself. You must always invest in yourself. Okay. It is 48 minutes. And I started to talk at uh, 11, 17. Allow me to submit, lastly, by telling you a fact of life. Always find one hour per day and paint a picture of what you want to see, what your future looks like. What you've not painted here, you'll never have it here. That goes to money. That goes to relationships, that goes to platforms, that goes to the rich. If you don't see it here, it will never manifest. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's so much I want to see uh, for you, Andrew Chiamagilo. Uh, thanks very much. It's indeed uh, very, very amazing. But I don't want to release you before you make a comment about black tax. Yeah, at least you make a comment about black tax before I pick for you some questions here. And uh, before I call it the black tax in regard to maybe to everyone, regardless. Okay. Actually, this uh, this platform has lecturers, has staff uh, all over the country. Black tax. I'll tell you, when it gets to black tax, it's what we call the sandwich, the sandwich generation model, where you think your parents and relatives are entitled to your money. No, they are not. Your money is entirely yours. If you're ever going to give support to your family, friends, and relatives, you better structure how you're going to give them the money. 
black tax is one of the biggest causes of mental breakdown. You have a lot of pressure and experiences and innuendos being thrown at you because you feel it's your obligation to take care of your parents. Now, listen, our parents didn't plan well because they were coming from a war-torn generation and indeed they had little to save. They invested in all of us and I don't want us to whine about it. They did a great job. But while they did a great job, you have a life to live. You have a life to map out. You could be a brother, a sister, and you're taking care of your siblings. The best to take care of your siblings, give them a pedigree. Don't become a hero for your family. Because even when you're not present, your family will survive. They will thrive, by the way. They will thrive. Those who are taking away money from you, those who are always saying that this and that, and they're trying to tell you that things are not happening, with your absence, they are going to happen. So think from the rim of, I want to be me. Those who are women on this platform, before you get married, don't carry your, your your baggage to your to your husband. You, you see that nonsense. That nonsense of always carrying what is at your home to bring it to your family. It's going to break your marriages. Research shows that between the age of 27 and 37, that's when families are breaking because women feel they are empowered, they are educated, they are exposed, and as such. They behave in a right stream, my right, my right, versus my role. I have a right to love my mother. I have a right to take care of my family. No one is challenging your right. Can you just get structured on your finances? Can you just get structured on your finances? Let me tell you, with or without you, your mother will survive. With or without you, your siblings will find life. With or without you, your family is going to stay. Stop playing a hero. People who are most prone to black tax are people who have a wreckage in their innermost feeling. You are not loved enough when you're growing up, so you feel that you want to prove to your family that you, you, you hit a jackpot. So everyone at home, God, you know, he needs to go to school. You feel that it's, it's, it's them. It's you to take care of them. You feel it's you. So you first heal yourself inside. You don't have self-esteem. You, you don't have the zeal to stand and say that this I can do. You are broken inside as an individual. Now, when you start to look at all those patterns, and by the way, that research from Andalide uh, University about um, the, 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 the cause of, of divorces and separation, where they say that women between the age of 27 and 37, that's where they lose marriages. At that time, what happens to the men? Men get detached. Men get detached. They start to look at things differently. They start to look at women as valueless beings because of what they're going through at home. And guess what? In all this, the children are watching a parent who is trying so hard to make it work, and a parent who is breaking it apart. Don't be that person. Don't be a superhero. Don't try to save everyone. The models of life where we are today, when you break even, first close the kaji. Work on yourself. Make sure that you're strong enough to carry other people. The reason why we break so easily in Africa, we want to carry so many people before we get enough muscle power. So get your muscles together. Get emotionally grounded. Get financially grounded. Get emotionally connected. Don't try to save everyone. After campus, be selfish about yourself. Get connected. Not networked. Get connected. When you get your money, save your money. And if you're giving out money in case someone is sick, Always never tell your family members that I'll carry the bill. No, tell them my contribution is 300K. When someone will come, 
my my contribution is 50k this is what i can because you're trying to make a life you're trying to build yourself you're trying to align a few nuggets here and then i will say yeah don't try to be a mongo when you're not until when you get to that level where you're in position to hold it back and say this i won't do it for this i won't allow it it's going to save you a lot. Last but not least, learn not to pick calls of relatives. Return calls. Don't pick their calls because when you pick their calls, they have a particular agenda they are driving and they will take you that way. When it's you who gives them a call back, you're in charge of the narrative. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. The beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you. I like these uncomfortable, honest conversations. So that is from uh, Comrade Andrew Chiamagiro Omutua Wansi, where we talk uncomfortable, honest conversations. Either take them or, or stay the way you are. That's it. No middle line. So you either that side or this side. So I really love such conversations, and I had to lure you into the trap. And you've done as a service. Um, <laughs> someone is saying, learn not to pick your family, return the calls. Oh my God. Someone is saying, Zengamfa. Don't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a few minutes to end this wonderful. Uh, someone has already sent me a message. Adrian, should we extend this lecture for 30 minutes? No, please. No, please. If you big my big So, we have to end it now. I want to pick um anyone with a question. Um, I want to give you a chance. You open your mic, uh, put up your hand, open your mic, ask Comrade Andrew one question. Um, in regard to our today's topic, it's the last lecture. We want to wish everyone who is going to graduate come next month. I don't know when Makel is graduating. I've seen some people from Islamic University of Uganda. I've seen some people from UCU. It's all over the world. Okay. Anyone? I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a question here. Uh, let me pick one here. I've seen a question. Uh, someone is asking. Um, uh, Comrade Andrew Chamagiro, uh, when should we think of committing to a relationship um, uh, we as boys who is this? I don't see any name on your, but I think that's... Okay. I will respond to that question. Men commit to relationships when women in the relationship submit. Simple and plain. That's it. If the, if the girlfriend you have cannot submit to you, you won't commit, however much you want it. But for her to submit, this is the context. For her to submit, you must give her a reason to submit. And that's leadership. Always give leadership. Always paint a picture of what you see this relationship getting to. Always listen to conversations telling her of what it's going to be like with her. The moment she starts to see that you have a vision. And then... You've given her a reason to submit. Now, once you give her the vision and she does not submit, press next. Uh, Comrade Andrew, there is a last question here. Um, I'm winding up a campus at Simbala University of Science and Technology. Okay. I, have, I haven't got uh, a job yet, but mm -hmm. I, have, I have a girlfriend. I don't want to lose her, but I cannot manage her. And we are only a few months to finishing campus. What can I do? <laughs> you can't manage her. Bro, I'll tell you the truth. I'm a reader of the Bible. And the Bible is very eloquent when it gets to this. Adam was not given until he made sense of the Garden of Eden. A man who has no mechanism or model of taking care of himself first should not bring another person in question so get yourself together this is what i'm telling you first put yourself together 
get your house in order and advance your in All right, uh, Andrew, continue. Uh, someone, uh, someone had interrupted by opening the mic. Okay, so man was given the Garden of Eden first, and then he was given Eve. First, make some money. Make some money. If you cannot take care of yourself first, don't bring any other person. Because if you're struggling to take care of her now, when she comes to you, the only way in Africa women and girls will think to contain relationship will be a baby. Now you'll have two other heads to feed, and you can't take care of yourself. What you're into, it's called love. But you see, as a man, you should always go beyond love. Don't just love women. Seem to understand them. When you understand them, it's easy to navigate. So for now, bro, you're just horny, and it's understandable. But it, 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 it won't last. First work on yourself. Ah, I think this guy uh, asked this question for very many people. I'm seeing people in the comment section saying, this is me too, this is me too. Okay, now you've been answered. Um, you are just horny, and it's understandable, please. Uh, life is full of choices, and you have to make a choice. All right, thanks so much, everyone who has been part of this amazing, um, amazing, amazing, amazing conversation. Um, this last lecture always takes place once in a year, uh, courtesy of uh, uh, Adrian Kakinda and Chambogu University, and this is the third season. So we shall have another season next year. For those who didn't have uh, got these uh, lectures, but the recording is going to be shared and even the recording will be saved on my YouTube channel. So you can as well go back and reflect on the words of uh, Andrew Chamagelo, uh, Canon Alice Damulida and Dr. Hilda Bahati in the morning, who they have thrown great, great, great messages. I don't know whether I still have um, Comrade Andrew around. You can give your parting shots. I don't know whether Canon Alice, you're still there. You, I request you to give your parting shots before I call on Dr. Henry Chibedi to also give us the parting shots as the head of the department. And then I will okay. say goodbye to you all. Yeah. Okay. My parting shots here are very simple. You're very lucky that today you had a conversation with different people from the different layers of life. I don't believe in accidents, but I strongly believe in the timing and the frequencies of the universe. The universe is telling you this because you needed to hear this, that you can upgrade and make choices in life. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, what kind of background you have. Life is entirely about choices. Be that person that is determined to make the choices. Be that person that is moved and grounded to make the choices you have. Don't play a hero. Don't try to play a hero in whatever you do. But above all, invest in yourself. Invest in knowledge. Humble yourself and get mental. Humble yourself and get nurtured. And as and when you break even, help a soul to lift another soul. Thank you. It's been an honor to share. I am not a monopoly of knowledge, but I share a few insights I have. But above all, it's your time now. That's why you're getting this information. Not everyone is getting it. So you qualify for the next level. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, regards to N N uh, N1 and the Omutua One CEO initiative and uh, Manikev Yugi um, is very passionate about the mental health of men and the boys because he understood that the country is more into the girl child and promoting that. And then we forget, we delineate uh, the boy child. And that's Comrade Andrew Chamagiro for you. Every Saturday morning at 7 a.m., he has he, he hosts a Twitter space called Manike Vyugi, where people talk openly about issues concerning men. But also ladies are also welcome. We always uh, contribute to that level, that side. All right. Um, Okay, uh, Canon Alice has left and Dr. Hilda have left. 
ladies and gentlemen, allow me to thank uh, the Department of Psychology of Jambo University and the Inst and the Guidance and Counseling Unit. I want to call on my boss, Dr. Henry Chibedi, please, parting shots. What is your say about this great platform? Probably as a father, you can also throw one word to your beloved daughters and sons. You're welcome, doctor. Thank you for organizing such an educative uh, uh, lecture. I'm very grateful as uh, staff members of the department, as students of Chambogo University, and the students from other universities and the people from the diaspora. Thank you to the participants. Great thanks goes to Dr. Bahati on that inspiration talk about relationships after campus. Thanks to Kanoni for focusing and expand the develop their career as the university. Thank you to Mr. Chamagero on that presentation on life after campus. I really liked the phases that a student goes through after campus. Setting up expectations, in these expectations as you enter the outside world, exploring passions, mentoring, navigating relationships, and also ensuring that you don't spend beyond your income, embracing your vulnerabilities as you interact with the people. This was really an educative seminar for all of us. And to the students of Chambogo University, I hope you have picked a lot of uh, points from these presentations. You must have a vision and a mission as you prepare for your graduation and as you enter the outside world of work. Outside there, there is a lot of unemployment. So you need to be job creators. You need to be your own employer. Don't walk the streets forever. Be imaginative, be creative. Use your life skills to survive. I wish all the best as you navigate the new world after graduation. Thank you, Mr. Kakinda, for organizing uh, today's uh, lecture. All right. Uh, thanks very much. We uh, hope you organize Okay, um, I think uh, more before even they are closed. Thank you so much. All right, uh, thanks very much, Dr. Henry Chibedi. A bit uh, network buffering there and there, but we've got I declare this. Okay, he has declared the talk or the lecture closed. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being part of this amazing public lecture. The last lecture, season three, ends here now. Uh, Comrade Dunstan, uh, please uh, open your mic and give us a closing prayer. We can't forget that. Uh, Dunstan uh, is an administrator in Jambo University, and he loves talking to young people. I'm seeing you online. Please, you can give us a closing prayer. Yes, I've been alerted that. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Ver ver okay. Come through. Oh, Adrian, thank you so much. Am I audible? Loud and clear. Uh, thank you so much for this session. I am very grateful. I had always longed to listen to, I call her Dr. Alice, but she wants to maintain canon. But yeah, I can add that since I'm in the university, I think I have the authority to grant her a title. Dr. Alice, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Bahati, it was a great talk. We wake up called so many people. Uh, Dr. Alice, summarizing five pray, you are hitting Sorry. below the belt. And I hope the people who are there must have had 
their stomachs grumbling and you're saying the real facts our stories are very great and they we have nothing much to add to the members who have been present thank you so much adrian i wish you could have it every semester not the last yeah, we should have it every semester since it's a university every semester appears like end of the year we should shift this every semester that we have a last year talk for every semester so let's humble ourselves and have a word of prayer we close this session for 2023 lord god want to thank you for the energy that you have given to our presenters today the listening ears that you gave to our students our friends our colleagues for to attend to this session adrian want to keep praying for your good health, for strength. We pray that you cope up with the weather in that place where you are. You must be missing a lot here. We pray for everyone, wherever you are, that you succeed excellently. See beyond your request. And we pray as that we end the year, those who are going out of the field of academics, the world of work, come embraced to Come ready to embrace the, some of the hints that have been given to you. We pray for good health, our families. We pray success to our candidates at university, primary, secondary. And we pray that we continue living to see the other day and the other day and the other day. A hundred and a thousand candles be blown over years. We pray all this with Jesus Christ our Lord. And all of us say, Amen. 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 Wow, thanks very much. It's over at my side. Please be well and take care of yourselves. It's done until next year. Thank you. Yeah, we are doing that. 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 We are no, we are done in this. But what about your friend? What is your name? Oh, I'm going to go.